Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Book One. I learned from my granddad, Verus, to use good manners and to control my anger. I followed my dad's well-known example of modesty and manliness. My mum taught me to be humble and generous, to keep myself not only from evil actions, but even from evil thoughts, and to live a simple life, which is far from normal among the rich. Because of my great granddad, I didn't have to attend public lectures and discussions, but had good and able teachers at home. And if not for him, I wouldn't know that this is priceless. My mentor taught me not to be too emotionally invested in sports and gambling. He also taught me how to work hard, not to need much stuff, to serve myself without bothering others, not to get involved in other people's affairs and not to talk behind people's back. From Diognetus, I learned not to be vain, be skeptical when it comes to self-help gurus or people that claim to have extraordinary powers, not to support anything that hurts animals without good reason, to fight for freedom of speech for everyone even though I might not agree with them, and to study philosophy with a passion. Because of him, I also got to know Bacchius, then Tandasis and Marcianus. This made me write down my philosophical thoughts when I was young and made me like the basic stuff, just like the Greek philosophers did. Thanks to Rusticus, I realized I needed to better myself. He helped me avoid getting caught up in showing off like other thinkers of the time, producing pretentious writings or giving big speeches. He also kept me from showing off with extreme lifestyles or trying too hard to look busy. I stopped focusing on fancy speech, poetry, and stopped showing off in fancy clothes at home. His simple way of writing, especially in a letter to my mum, stood out to me. He taught me to forgive easily, to read thoroughly, to not just accept things at face value and not to get impressed by just talk. Because of him, I got to read Epictetus's works from his own collection. From Apollonius, I learned about real freedom and staying focused on my goals. He taught me to always follow reason, no matter what, even during tough times like physical pain, losing loved ones or long illnesses. He showed me how someone can be both adaptable and firm when needed. He was patient when explaining things and didn't boast about his teaching skills. He also showed me how to accept help from friends without feeling inferior or ungrateful. Sextus taught me kindness and showed me what a loving family looks like. From him, I learned to be serious without pretending, understand people's different personalities and to be patient with those who don't think things through. He was friendly and respected by all. He knew life's important lessons and showed me how to stay calm, be loving and encourage others without showing off. Alexander the Grammarian taught me not to criticize, silence or in any other way censure people for speaking incorrectly. Instead, I should respond with the correct pronunciation or focus on the topic, not how they said it. Fronto showed me that leaders often face jealousy, deceit, and fake people around them. And sometimes, those from noble families might not be as loving as expected. Alexander the Platonist reminded me not to always say, I'm busy. It's not good to avoid responsibilities or people using that excuse. Catullus taught me to be understanding, even if a friend is wrong, and to always speak highly of my teachers also to genuinely love my kids. My brother Severus taught me to love family, value truth and justice. He introduced me to great thinkers and the idea of a fair government and king. He was honest, kind and believed in the good in people. Maximus advised me to control my emotions, think clearly and stay strong during tough times. People trusted him because he was genuine, never surprised and always focused. He was not quick to smile, but wasn't angry either. He was kind, forgiving, and honest. People respected him, and he had a good sense of humor. From my dad, I learned many valuable lessons. He taught me the importance of being kind and maintaining consistency in decisions, especially after giving them proper thought. He instilled in me the value of hard work and the importance of not seeking fame or recognition in the way most people do. He was always open to listening to others, 
especially if their ideas or suggestions would benefit the community. My dad was a beacon of fairness. He knew when to be strict and when to show mercy. He lived a life free from wrongful desires and always treated everyone with kindness and respect. He was very understanding with his friends, never holding it against them if they couldn't meet up or join him. In discussions or debates, he was the epitome of patience, always taking his time to come to a conclusion rather than rushing into judgments. He was incredibly loyal to those he called friends. He always planned for the future and paid attention to even the smallest details. He didn't seek validation or get swayed by what others said about him. When it came to public funds, he managed them with utmost responsibility and wasn't easily bothered by criticism. Religion and people-pleasing were not his driving forces. Instead, he was grounded, stable, and made decisions based on reason. He enjoyed the comforts life offered, but was never flashy or dependent on them. He held genuine thinkers in high regard and was a pleasure to converse with. He took moderate care of his health and was seldom sick. One of his admirable qualities was his ability to recognize and support those who had special talents or skills. He was deeply rooted in traditions, but never made a show of it. He wasn't a fan of unnecessary changes and was quite reserved when it came to secrets, only keeping those related to public affairs. He was sensible in how he hosted events for people and wasn't overly concerned about his physical appearance or material possessions. There were stories of his kind acts, like forgiving a tax collector who wronged him. He approached tasks with calmness, never getting too intense or worked up. He was similar to Socrates in many ways, especially in his ability to enjoy things in moderation. Whether in times of plenty or in times of scarcity, he remained strong, a trait particularly evident during the illness of Maximus. I'm deeply thankful to the gods for many things in my life. First and foremost, I was blessed with a loving family, from my grandparents to my parents to my sister. They've been my foundation. I also had the privilege of being surrounded by good teachers, loyal servants, and supportive friends and relatives. What's more, even with my sometimes challenging nature, I managed not to upset or offend them, which I believe was because of their positive influence on me. I'm grateful for the lessons in humility and simplicity I received early in life. These lessons helped me understand the value of modesty, it's also a blessing that I wasn't swayed by the allure of love too early or too recklessly. One of the significant influences in my life was the ruler I lived under. He taught me that you don't need grand displays of wealth or power to be a great leader. He showed me that a leader could be humble, almost like an ordinary person, yet still be effective in roles that require authority. My brother has been a pillar of support and love. His character has been both an inspiration and a source of joy for me. I've also been fortunate with my children. They're kind-hearted and, thankfully, healthy. They didn't show any signs of physical deformities. In terms of my personal growth, I'm glad that I didn't get too engrossed in studies that weren't truly meaningful or beneficial in the long run. And when it came to helping those who had cared for me in my youth, I'm glad I could assist them in achieving their dreams without unnecessary delays. Speaking of influences, I cannot forget the significant impact of people like Apollonius, Rusticus and Maximus on my life. They shaped my understanding of what it means to live a life true to nature and purpose. If I ever fell short of these ideals, it was my own doing, not because of a lack of guidance from the gods. My health has been another area where I've felt divine protection. They've kept me from making mistakes in relationships and guided me even through dreams when I faced health issues. The gods also protected me when I began my journey into philosophy, ensuring that I wasn't misled by people with superficial knowledge or false teachings. All in all, when I look back at my life, I realize that many good things have happened to me. And I believe it wasn't just luck but a combination of fate and the grace of the gods. Book two. Remind yourself every morning. Today, I'll encounter difficult people, punks, the ungrateful, the arrogant, and the selfish. 
They act this way because they don't understand right from wrong. But I've seen the beauty in good and the ugliness in bad. I recognize that even the wrongdoer is like a brother to me, not by blood, but by shared humanity. So, none of them can truly harm me. I won't let anger sever the bond between us. Just like our body parts work together, we're meant to support each other. Being angry or distant goes against our nature. I'm made up of flesh, breath, and my conscious mind. I don't need more books or distractions, especially now that I'm older. The flesh is just bone and blood, and breath is simply air we take in and out. The most important part is the conscious mind. As I age, I need to ensure it's not enslaved by petty desires. I'll embrace what comes my way and won't fear the future. Everything the gods decide is well thought out. Random events are still part of nature and linked to a grand design. Everything has its origin and purpose. Remember, you're part of this vast universe. Changes are natural, whether in elements or in complex entities. Keep this belief and let go of the constant need for more knowledge. When your time comes, depart with gratitude. Reflect on how much time you've wasted and the countless chances the gods gave you. It's crucial to understand the universe and your role in it. You have limited time. If you don't use it wisely, it'll pass just like everything else. Every day, act with genuine dignity, kindness and fairness, setting aside distractions. Approach each task as if it's your last, without being stubborn or going against reason. Avoid being fake, selfish, or unhappy with life's outcomes. If you stick to these principles, you've done all the gods ask of you. Push yourself, soul. Don't waste time seeking validation from others. Life is short, and you're using yours, looking for happiness in others, instead of finding self-worth. Don't get lost in endless activities. Take time to learn and grow. Have a clear goal that drives all your actions and decisions instead of just aimlessly going through life. People rarely suffer from not understanding others' thoughts. But if you don't understand your own feelings and thoughts, you're bound to be unhappy. Always remember the bigger picture, how the universe works, who you are, and how you fit into it. Your traits are part of the universe's traits and no one can stop you from living true to your nature. Theophrastus, in his wisdom, notes that crimes committed for pleasure are worse than those committed out of anger or passion. Why? Because someone overtaken by anger is momentarily losing reason, almost like a sudden outburst. In contrast, someone who does wrong for the sake of pleasure has actively chosen to give in to temptation, making them appear weaker in character. So, in a truly thoughtful way, Theophrastus believes that giving in to pleasure is more problematic than reacting out of pain, especially since the latter might be a response to being wronged. Live every moment as if it could be your last. If there are gods, leaving this world isn't scary because they wouldn't harm you. If there aren't any gods or they don't care about us, why live in such a universe? But let's believe there are gods, and they do care. They've ensured we can avoid real harm. Other life events, like death, fame, pain, or wealth, happen to everyone, good or bad. Since they don't define our character, they're neither good nor bad. Our ability to reason lets us see how quickly everything fades. Physical things disappear, and even memories fade over time. Things that attract or scare us, or that we're proud of, are fleeting and temporary. Think about the people whose opinions we value, what's their true worth, and about death, if we really think about it, without the usual fear, it's just a natural process. Being afraid of something natural is naive. Understanding death helps us understand our connection to the universe and, potentially, to God. The poet says it's pointless to obsess over understanding everything around us, especially trying to guess what's in others' minds. What's important is focusing on the inner spirit within us. True worship is about keeping our spirit free from unnecessary emotions and not complaining about what the gods or people do. We should respect the gods' actions and either appreciate or feel empathy for people's actions, understanding that sometimes they just don't know right from wrong. This ignorance is as big a handicap as not knowing basic colors. 
Whether you live for thousands of years or just a moment, remember that everyone only loses the life they're currently living and lives the moment they're in. The past and future are beyond our reach. So, two things to remember. Everything in life is cyclical, and whether you live a short or long life, everyone loses the same thing in death, the present moment. No one can lose what they never had. Monimus the Cynic once said that only opinions matter. While there are clear arguments against this, it's also clear that there's some truth to it if taken with a pinch of salt. A person's soul devalues itself when it resists the natural flow of the universe. Getting upset over specific events means rejecting the natural order of things. The soul also tarnishes itself when it harbors ill will towards someone, especially with the intent to harm. It's further compromised when it's overwhelmed by pleasure or pain, when it acts with insincerity or deceit, and when its actions lack purpose. All actions, even the smallest, should have a meaningful intent. After all, rational beings should align with the universal law that binds us all. Human life is brief and unpredictable. Our physical bodies are fragile and our perceptions are often clouded. Chasing fame is fleeting as eventually everyone is forgotten. What can guide us through this? Only philosophy. It helps us maintain our inner integrity Stay resilient against both pleasure and pain, act genuinely, and remain unaffected by others' actions. It teaches us to accept our fate, understanding that it stems from the same source as us. Most importantly, philosophy helps us face death calmly, seeing it as a natural transformation. If the individual elements of life remain unharmed through changes, why should the transformation of the whole be any different? Everything natural, is inherently good. Book 3 People should remember that every day a part of their life passes and they have less time left. But it's not just about the amount of time. As we age, our mental sharpness might decline too. Even if we live longer, our ability to think clearly, make decisions and understand complex issues might weaken. So, it's not just the fear of death that should motivate us but also the possibility of losing our mental clarity before we pass away. We should make the most of our time now, not just because our days are numbered, but because our clear thinking might run out before our days do. Notice how even the unexpected or imperfect parts of nature have their own beauty. For example, when bread bakes, it might crack, but those cracks make it look even more delicious. Ripe figs open up, and overripe olives get a unique appearance that's quite appealing. Even things like the way corneas droop or a lion's intense gaze can be seen as beautiful. These might not seem attractive at first, but they're all part of nature's charm. Someone who really appreciates nature will find beauty in all its aspects. They'll enjoy seeing wild animals in nature just as much as they would in art. They'll appreciate the elegance of older people and the vibrant energy of the young. If you truly understand and connect with nature, you'll find beauty in many things that others might overlook. Hippocrates, who cured many, eventually got sick and died. The Chaldeans predicted many people's deaths, but also met their own end. Big leaders like Alexander, Pompey and Caesar, who conquered cities and armies, also passed away. Philosophers like Heraclitus and Democritus died in ironic ways, considering their beliefs and Socrates was executed. So what's the point? Life is a journey, and everyone has an end. When it's time to move on, whether to another life or nothingness, you'll either meet the divine or be free from life's ups and downs. Remember, our soul is powerful and divine, while our body is just temporary and fragile. Don't waste your time worrying about what others are doing unless it benefits everyone. When you obsess over others' actions, words or intentions, you're not focusing on improving yourself. Keep your thoughts positive and avoid pointless or negative thinking. Train your mind so that if someone asks what you're thinking, you can answer honestly and directly. Aim to be genuine and kind, avoiding desires for fleeting pleasures and avoiding negative emotions like jealousy or resentment. 
Think of yourself as someone striving to be the best version of themselves, almost like a guide or mentor. Such a person values fairness, accepts life's events as they come, and doesn't concern themselves with others' opinions, unless it's for a greater good. Focus on your actions and how they fit into the bigger picture, believing in their importance. Remember that we're all connected as humans, and we should care for one another. Stick to values that align with a good, natural life. And when considering the opinions of those who don't live by these principles, remember their actions and environments. Their praise shouldn't matter much, since they're not even content with themselves. When you act, do it without hesitation, selfishness, poor judgment, or feeling forced. Keep your thoughts straightforward and don't overcomplicate them. Avoid pointless chatter and meddling in others' affairs. Let your inner values guide you to act responsibly, with wisdom and with the pride of a leader. Always be ready for whatever comes next in life without needing approval or validation from others. Stay positive and rely on yourself. It's important to stand strong on your own, not leaning on others for support. If you find something in life better than being fair, honest, disciplined and strong, or anything more fulfilling than being at peace with your decisions and accepting things beyond your control, then fully embrace it. But if you value the inner strength and wisdom inside you, which helps you make good choices, think clearly and show kindness to others, then prioritize that above everything else. Don't get distracted by seeking approval, power, wealth, or short-term pleasures. These things might seem tempting, but they can lead you off track. Always choose what's truly best for you. If it's good for your mind and soul, commit to it. If it's good for your body, recognize it and be humble about it. Just make sure you're clear about what's genuinely best for you. Always prioritize honesty and integrity. Don't do things that force you to betray your values, distrust others, or hide your actions. Focus on your inner self and the good qualities within. Don't be overly dramatic or affected by surroundings. You don't need to be alone or in a crowd to find peace. Don't obsess over life's length. It's how you live that counts. The most important thing is to always act in a way that respects yourself and others. In the mind of someone who's learned and grown, you won't find anything toxic or unhealthy. Life doesn't end for him before it's meant to, just like an actor doesn't leave the stage before his role is done. There's nothing fake or overly traditional about him, and he doesn't hide from criticism or seek to stay hidden. Value the ability to form opinions. It's only because of this ability that we think in a way that's logical and reasonable. It helps us avoid jumping to conclusions, be understanding towards others, and respect higher powers. Let go of unnecessary things and focus on the essentials. Remember, we only truly live in the present moment. Everything else is either in the past or uncertain. We all have a short time to live and we occupy just a tiny part of the world. Even the most famous people are only remembered for a short while and that memory is passed down by others who will also pass away. Many of these people don't even truly know themselves, let alone those who died ages ago. Keep these guidelines in mind. When something catches your attention, break it down to understand its basic essence and its bigger picture. Ask yourself what it's made of, its real name, and how long it might last. Think about its role in the universe and its importance to us as humans. Whenever you're faced with a situation, think about what good quality it's asking you to show, like kindness, bravery, honesty, or any other virtue. For every situation, remind yourself, this is either from a higher power, fate, chance, or from another person who might not know better. But I know better, so I'll treat them with kindness and fairness and always try to see things for their true worth. If you focus on what's right now and do it with passion, while staying true to logic and sincerity, you'll lead a good life. And no one can stop you from doing that. Just like surgeons always have their tools ready for emergencies, you should always be prepared with the knowledge to understand the world around you. This helps you connect with both the divine and the everyday. If you forget this, 
you'll fall short in your responsibilities to both people and the higher powers. Stop getting lost in daydreams. You might not get another chance to revisit your past, read about ancient heroes, or go through your saved readings. Focus on the present and what's truly important. Let go of unrealistic expectations and help yourself while you still can. People often don't grasp the deeper meanings behind actions like stealing or buying. It's not just our eyes that see these things. It's a deeper understanding that recognizes their true nature. We all have a body, emotions, and thoughts. Our body gives us physical sensations, our emotions can be intense, and our thoughts guide our actions. Animals also feel sensations and have emotions, just like us. Even the worst people can think and make decisions. So, what makes a good person stand out? It's their ability to accept what happens in life, to keep their inner self calm and pure, and to always be truthful and fair. Even if others doubt their sincerity, a good person stays true to their path. They aim to live a simple, honest life, and when it's time to move on, they do so peacefully, without resistance. Book 4 Our inner strength, when aligned with our true nature, helps us adapt to any situation. It doesn't need specific conditions to thrive. Just like a fire can take anything thrown into it and use it to grow bigger and stronger, our inner strength can use challenges to become even stronger. Don't act without thinking. Always base your actions on solid reasoning and values. People often look for peace and quiet in places like the countryside, beaches or mountains. You too might want such breaks. But the real secret is that you can find this peace anytime by simply reflecting inward. Your mind can be your peaceful retreat. It's about finding balance and order in your thoughts. So, take these moments of self-reflection regularly to recharge. Keep some simple truths in mind. If you're upset about people's bad behavior, remember that everyone's here to coexist. Some people can't help their actions. Also, think about all those who once held grudges and are now gone. So, why waste time complaining? If you're worried about your role in the world, remember that either there's a bigger plan or everything is random. And if you're hung up on physical pain, remember that your mind can rise above it. Wanna be famous? Realize how quickly people forget and how limited the scope of genuine admiration is. In short, always come back to the peace inside you. Stay grounded and don't get overly stressed. Remember your values and approach life bravely and thoughtfully. Two key things to remember. First, external events don't shape our inner peace. It's how we perceive them. And second, everything changes quickly, so focus on the present. Life, after all, is shaped by our thoughts. If we all have a mind and can reason, then we share a common sense of understanding and decision-making. This means we all follow a universal law, making us part of a global community. This world is like our shared country, and from it, we get our ability to think and make choices. Just like my physical elements come from the earth and other sources, my mind must come from somewhere too. Death, like birth, is a natural process. Both are parts of life, and neither should be seen as shameful or unnatural. People act based on their nature, just like figs are naturally juicy. Remember, we all have a limited time in life, and soon, no one will remember us or our actions. If you stop thinking, I am hurt, you won't feel the pain. If you don't acknowledge the pain, the feeling of being hurt goes away. Anything that doesn't make a person worse off doesn't harm their life. What doesn't damage you on the inside or outside isn't truly harmful. Things work as they're supposed to. Everything happens for a reason, and it's usually for the best. If you look closely, you'll see it's not just about nature, but also about fairness. Keep this perspective and always aim for genuine goodness in all you do. Don't just see things based on what someone who insults you thinks. Understand the real picture. Always be prepared to, first, act based on what's best for people, guided by logical thinking. Second, be open to changing your mind if someone offers a better perspective. 
but only change if it's for the greater good, not just for personal gain or fame. If you have the ability to think and reason, why not use it? If it's working right, what else do you need? You're a part of something bigger. Eventually, you'll go back to where you came from or transform back into the universe's intelligence. Imagine many pieces of incense burning on an altar. Some burn out quickly, others take longer. In the end, it doesn't matter when. In just 10 days, if you start acting ethically and think rationally, those who criticize you now will see you as wise and enlightened. Live your life as if you don't have endless time. Remember, life is unpredictable. So while you have the chance, be kind and do good. You get so much peace when you stop worrying about what others are doing or thinking and focus on making your actions just and pure. Stay on your path and don't get distracted by others. If you're stressing about the legacy or fame you'll leave behind, think about this. Everyone who remembers you will eventually pass away and so will the next generation after them until no one recalls you anymore. Even if your memory lasted forever, what real benefit does it bring to you? What's the point of seeking praise when it doesn't change the essence of who you are or what you can control? True beauty stands on its own and doesn't need validation through praise. Just like genuine beauty, things like truth, honor, and kindness don't change in value based on others' opinions. Consider an emerald. It doesn't lose its shine if no one compliments it. The same goes for gold or a beautiful piece of art. Their value remains regardless of praise or criticism. If our spirits live on after we die, you might wonder how the atmosphere has held them since forever. Well, think about how the earth has held countless buried bodies for ages. Bodies decompose over time, making space for new ones. Similarly, when spirits are released, they might linger briefly, then transform and merge back into the universal energy, making room for new spirits. Think about all the animals we eat. They become part of us, but there's always space because they change into different forms within us. So, the real focus should be understanding the nature and purpose of things. Stay on track. Always act fairly and make sure you truly understand things before forming opinions. I'm in sync with everything natural. For me, everything is on time if it's on your schedule. I cherish all that you bring with each season. Everything originates from you you embrace everything, and eventually, everything returns to you. Some praise their hometown with affection, but shouldn't I express love for this universe, the true city of the divine? If you want peace, do less, the philosopher suggests. A better approach might be, do what's essential, what makes sense for someone who's part of a community, and do it with that purpose in mind. This way, you'll find peace both from doing the right thing and from not being overwhelmed with too many tasks. Most of what you say and do isn't needed. Cut those out and you'll have more free time and less stress. So, always ask yourself, is this really necessary? This applies to both actions and thoughts. By cutting out the unnecessary, you'll avoid wasting time and effort. Try living like a genuinely good person, one who's happy with what life has given them and who takes pride in doing the right thing and being kind. You've tried other lifestyles. Give this one a shot too. Keep things simple and avoid overcomplicating things. If someone does wrong, it's on them. If something happens to you, accept it. It's all part of the bigger picture. Remember, life is short. Make the most of now, but do so wisely and fairly. And when you relax, do it mindfully. The universe is either organized or chaotic. But even if it's a mix of many things, it's definitely organized. Think about it. How can you have order within yourself and believe the universe is chaotic? Especially when everything, even if scattered, is connected in some way. Think about these negative traits. Being mean, weak-minded, wild, acting like an animal, being immature, acting stupid, dishonest, crude, sneaky, and bossy. Someone who doesn't understand the world or what happens in it is like a stranger to it. If you run from the natural logic of the world, you're abandoning it. If you're closed-minded, you're blind to understanding. If you always rely on others, 
and don't have what you need for life, you're like a beggar. If you're unhappy with what life throws at you, you're not in tune with nature, even though you're a part of it. If you isolate yourself from the collective understanding of all rational beings, you're going against the unity of the universe. Some people show their commitment to philosophy by going without fancy clothes, others by not having books, and some even do so while having very little. One person might say, I don't have food, but I stay true to my beliefs. Another might say, I lack education, but I remain committed. Appreciate the skills you've learned, no matter how simple they seem. Find joy in them. Live your life fully trusting the universe or higher powers, and don't try to control or be controlled by others. Think about the times of Vespasian. It's just like today. People were getting married, raising kids, dealing with illness and death, fighting wars, celebrating, doing business, and farming. They were also dealing with common human behaviors, like seeking approval, being stubborn, being suspicious, plotting against others, feeling envious, seeking love or power, and hoarding wealth. But all those moments are in the past now. Move forward to Trajan's era, and it's the same story. That era has passed too. Look at history and see that people always chase after things, but eventually, everything fades away. Especially remember people you knew who got caught up in trivial matters or didn't find their true purpose. Keep in mind that you should only worry about things based on their actual importance. This way, you won't get too stressed over minor issues. Famous phrases and names from the past eventually become unfamiliar and outdated. Think about names like Camillus, Ciso, and even more recent ones like Augustus or Antonine. They all fade with time. Everything has an expiration date and will eventually be seen as old tales before being forgotten. This applies even to the most famous individuals. Most people are forgotten as soon as they're gone. So, chasing eternal fame is pointless. What truly matters is being honest, genuine, and accepting life's events with a positive attitude, recognizing they're inevitable and part of our shared experience. Go with the flow of life and let fate take its course. Everything is temporary, both memories and what's being remembered. Remember that everything is constantly changing. Nature loves to transform things and create new versions of them. Think of the present as a seed for the future. And don't limit the idea of a seed to just what's planted in soil or a womb. That's a limited view. You're not going to live forever. Yet, you haven't achieved simplicity or inner peace or understood that external things can't truly hurt you. You haven't fully embraced kindness or realized that fairness is the essence of wisdom. Pay attention to what drives people. Notice what they care about, what they chase after, and what they avoid. Things that harm you don't come from others' souls or changes in your surroundings. The real issue is in how you perceive and judge these things. If you stop viewing them as bad, you'll be at peace. Even if your body goes through pain or sickness, don't let your mind label these experiences as either bad or good. Remember, things that happen to both good and bad people aren't inherently good or evil. Think of the universe as one living entity, made of one material and one spirit. Notice how everything is guided by a single intelligence, driven by a shared force, and how everything influences everything else. Everything is connected in this intricate web. You're a soul stuck in a body, Epictetus once said. Things that are constantly changing can't be hurt by it, and things that don't change can't benefit from it. Time is like a fast-flowing river, where everything that appears is quickly carried away only to be replaced by something else that's also fleeting. Everything that happens is as natural as flowers blooming in spring or fruits ripening in summer. This includes sickness, death, rumors, betrayal, and all the other things that upset or excite people. Everything has a cause and effect based on a specific and necessary connection. It's not just a random list of events. There's a reason behind it. Just as things now are interconnected, the future events will also have a meaningful connection with what came before. Always remember what Heraclitus said. 
Earth changes to water, water to air, and air to fire, and vice versa. Don't forget where life's journey leads. It's strange how people often disagree with the logic that's always with them, or find everyday things surprising. We shouldn't go through life mindlessly, like we're sleepwalking or just accepting things, because that's what we were told as kids. If someone told you you're going to die tomorrow, or the day after, would it really matter which day? The difference is so small. So don't fret about whether you live for many more years, or just one more day. Think about all the doctors, astrologers, philosophers, soldiers, and rulers who've passed away. They all had their moments, but now they're gone. Even entire cities, like Pompeii, have disappeared. Remember the people you've known who've passed away, one after another. Everyone's time comes. When you reflect on life, see how brief and fleeting it is. So, live in harmony with nature, and when your time comes, leave peacefully, just as a ripe olive falls gracefully from its tree, grateful for the life it had. Imagine yourself as a strong cliff against which waves crash but can't move. If something bad happens, instead of saying, this is terrible for me, think, I'm strong, because even when this happens, I don't let it break me or make me fear the future. Bad stuff can happen to anyone, but not everyone handles it well. Instead of focusing on the bad event, focus on how strong you are for handling it. A real misfortune is when something stops you from being honest, brave, wise, and other good qualities. So, next time you're upset, remind yourself. It's not the bad event, but how you handle it that matters. Here's a simple thought that helps you not fear death. Think of all the people who really wanted to live long, and did. What did they gain compared to those who died early? Everyone ends up dead anyway. Even people who lived long lives and saw others die, eventually face the same fate. When you think about the vastness of time before and after us, the length of one's life, whether short like a few days, or as long as the oldest people, doesn't seem that different. So, don't overvalue a long life, especially when it's filled with challenges and spent among people who don't matter in a fragile body. Always take the direct path, the one that's natural. Speak and act based on what's right and logical. This approach will save you from unnecessary stress, conflict, and the need to show off or manipulate situations. Book five. When you don't feel like getting up in the morning, remind yourself, I'm waking up to do what humans are meant to do. Why complain about doing what I was born for? Am I just meant to stay in bed and stay warm? You might think, why not be comfortable in my bed? Is life just about being comfortable or is it about doing things? Look at the smallest plants and animals. They all have a role and contribute to the world. So why wouldn't you do your part as a human? Yes, rest is essential, but there's a balance to it, just like eating. You're overdoing the rest and not doing enough work. If you truly cared about yourself, you'd value your purpose. Some people are so passionate about their craft that they'll work tirelessly, even skipping meals. But you don't seem to value your role in the world as much as they value their work. Some people would give up anything to achieve their dreams. Shouldn't you be as committed to your natural purpose? It's straightforward to push aside any disturbing thoughts and immediately feel at peace. Don't think any action or statement that aligns with nature is beneath you. Don't let others' criticisms discourage you. If it's the right thing to do, then do it. People will always have opinions but stick to what you believe is right. Just follow your path and the natural way of the universe. They're both guiding you in the same direction. I live life following nature's path and one day I'll return to it. I'll breathe my last breath into the air I've been breathing from and my body will return to the earth. This earth that has fed and supported me all these years, even though I haven't always treated it well. People might not praise you for being clever and that's okay. There are many other qualities you possess. Be honest, act with dignity, work hard, avoid excessive pleasures, don't complain about life's challenges, live simply, be kind and straightforward, avoid exaggeration and pointless chatter.
and aim for greatness. You have so many virtues, yet you don't always show them. You don't need to be negative or seek validation from others or be restless. Instead, focus on improving yourself. If you find it hard to grasp things quickly, work on it. Don't ignore it, but don't indulge in self-pity either. Some people remind you often about the favors they've done for you, as if keeping score. Others might not voice it, but think you owe them for their kindness. But there are some who help without expecting anything in return. They're like a vine that simply produces grapes and doesn't ask for praise. Just as a horse runs without boasting, or a bee makes honey without showing off, these people help others and then move on, ready to help again. Should we act without realizing we're being selfless? Yes, but be careful. If you misunderstand this, you might end up like the first group who boast. True selflessness means doing good without expecting a pat on the back. The Athenians had a straightforward prayer. Rain, rain, dear Zeus, on the fields and farmlands of the Athenians. We should either not pray or keep our prayers simple and sincere like this. Just like when a doctor recommends a specific treatment, like taking cold baths or a particular exercise, think of life's challenges, be it sickness, losses, or other hardships, as prescriptions from the universe. These prescriptions are given not to harm you, but to fit into a larger plan, just like individual bricks fit together to build a wall. Everything in the universe is connected in a harmonious way. People often say, it was meant to be, or, it was fate. This implies that everything that happens is part of a bigger plan. So, when life throws challenges at you, think of them as a doctor's advice. We follow medical advice, even if it's tough, hoping to get better. Similarly, accept life's challenges because they're part of the universe's way of maintaining balance and order. Everything that happens is for the greater good of the entire universe. So, Remember two things. First, whatever happens to you is part of a plan that's been in place since the beginning. Second, everything, even personal challenges, plays a role in the grand scheme of things. Every time you complain about your fate, you disrupt this balance. So, accept and move forward. Don't stress or get discouraged if you can't always live up to your highest ideals. It's okay to slip up sometimes. If you do, just try again and remember that most of the time, you're doing your best. Appreciate the good in you, and when you need guidance, turn to philosophy. Think of it not as going to a strict teacher, but like using a remedy to soothe an ache. This way, you won't just be following reason for show, it'll genuinely help you. Keep in mind, philosophy only asks you to do what's natural for you. Sometimes you might crave things that aren't really good for you because they seem fun, but think about it. Aren't traits like courage, honesty, simplicity, kindness, and spirituality even more fulfilling? And there's nothing better than feeling wise, knowing that you're making good choices and thinking clearly. The true nature of things is often hidden, making it tough for even great thinkers to fully understand them. Even the Stoics admit that it's hard to know anything for sure. Our beliefs are often inconsistent, and when you think about what we value, it's fleeting and not that special. Sometimes the things we value are also valued by people with questionable morals. When you look at how people behave, it's hard to find someone genuinely admirable, including ourselves. In such a messy, ever-changing world, it's hard to find anything genuinely worth wanting. Instead, we should find comfort in the natural flow of life, reminding ourselves of two things. First, whatever happens, is part of the natural order. Second, we always have the choice not to go against our core values, no matter the external pressure. How am I using my inner self? I should constantly reflect on this and think about the current state of my guiding spirit. I should also consider what kind of spirit I possess. Is it immature, fearful, aggressive, or calm? Is it more like a gentle animal or a wild one? You can tell what people really value based on what they consider good. If someone values real virtues like wisdom, self-control, fairness, or bravery, they won't be bothered by jokes about having too much of a good thing. 
But if they value things that society usually chases, like money or luxury, they'll find those jokes funny. This shows even everyday people can spot the difference. Think about it. If these material things were truly valuable, we wouldn't laugh at the idea of someone having so much wealth that they don't even have space to relax. I'm made up of two parts, my body and my soul. Neither will just vanish. They didn't come from nothing. Every bit of me will change and become part of the universe in some way. This cycle will keep going. It's how I was born, how my ancestors were born, and it's been happening forever. This idea still holds, even if the universe has set patterns it follows. Our ability to reason and think clearly are powers that stand on their own. They start from within and follow their own path. When our thoughts are clear and direct, we say they're right because they're on the right track. A person should only be judged based on what's truly part of their nature. If something isn't essential to who they are, you can't expect it from them. And it's not what defines their worth or happiness. If something was truly essential, it wouldn't be right to avoid or reject it. However, we see that the less one relies on non-essential things, the stronger and better they become. Your frequent thoughts shape your mindset. Your mind will reflect what you often think about. So, fill your mind with positive thoughts like, you can find happiness and live well anywhere, even in challenging environments like a busy city or a court. Everything has a purpose and works towards achieving its best state. For thinking beings, like humans, being social and connecting with others is essential. It's clear that everything has a hierarchy, with reasoning beings at the top meant to work together and support one another. Chasing after impossible things is crazy. Bad people will always act in certain ways, no matter what. People can handle anything life throws at them. It's in our nature. Some people stay strong either because they don't realize what's happening or they want to show off. It's odd that pretending or not knowing can be stronger than actual wisdom. Physical things can't affect our inner feelings or soul. Only our own thoughts and beliefs can change how we feel. External events are interpreted by our internal beliefs. On one hand, I feel close to other people because I want to help and understand them. But if they get in my way, I see them as just another part of the environment, like the weather or animals. They might disrupt my plans, but they can't change my goals or feelings. My mind can turn any obstacle into an advantage. Respect the greatest force in the universe, which controls everything. Also, respect the best part of yourself, which guides your actions and decisions. It's connected to the universe's force. If something doesn't harm the community, it doesn't harm its members. Remember this when you feel wronged. If the community isn't affected, neither am I. If it is, don't be angry at the person causing the harm. Instead, think about why they did it. Often think about how quickly things change and move on. Everything is like a constantly flowing river, always changing, influenced by countless factors. Almost nothing stays the same. With the vastness of the past and the unpredictability of the future surrounding us, it's silly to let temporary successes or problems get to our heads. Remember how tiny our role is in the vast universe and how short our time is in the grand scheme of things. Think about the bigger picture and how small our part in it truly is. If someone does me wrong, that's their issue. They're responsible for their actions. I'll focus on what I can control and act according to my beliefs. When you feel strong emotions, whether they're mild or intense, keep your mind steady and separate from these feelings. While it's natural to feel emotions due to our body's reactions, the mind should recognize these feelings without judging them as good or bad. Stay connected with the higher powers or the universe. You're truly in sync with them when you're content with your life and follow your inner guidance. This inner wisdom or intuition is a gift we all have, guiding us in our decisions. Are you upset with someone because they smell bad or have bad breath? Why? That's just how their body is. But remember, people can change if they're aware. Instead of getting mad, talk to them. Help them understand. If they listen, 
problem solved. Remember, you're better than just reacting. You can think and guide others. Live wherever you are just as you would anywhere else. If people make it hard for you, then it's okay to leave. Think of it like leaving a smoky room. As long as you're not forced out, you're free to do as you please. And what you want is to be thoughtful and considerate of others. The universe is designed to be interconnected. Everything has its place and purpose. Everything works together, from the smaller to the larger parts. Everything is organized and set up to work in harmony. The universe encourages collaboration and unity among its parts. Think about how you've treated everyone in your life. The gods, your family, teachers, friends, and even those who work for you. Have you always been kind and gentle with them? Remember all the experiences you've been through, both good and bad. Think about the beautiful moments you've witnessed, the challenges you've overcome, the recognition you've skipped, and the times you've been kind to difficult people. Why do people with less knowledge or skill often challenge those who are more informed and skilled? A truly intelligent soul is one that understands the bigger picture, the reasoning behind everything, and recognizes the patterns and cycles in the universe. Soon, all that will be left of you is memories, maybe not even a name. A name is just a sound, and the things we value in life are fleeting and superficial. We often act like kids, fighting and making up over trivial matters. But qualities like honesty, humility, justice, and truth are eternal. So, what's keeping you here? Material things are temporary and unreliable. Our senses can be misleading, and our very existence is fragile. Fame doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. So, what should you focus on until your time comes? Maybe living a life that respects the gods, being kind, patient, and understanding toward others. And whatever is beyond our physical existence, remember, it's not something you own or control. You can have a successful life if you choose the right path and stay true to it in everything you think and do. Both humans and higher beings share two benefits. First, nothing outside of them can hold them back. Second, their happiness comes from having a just mindset and actions and making that their main goal. If I didn't do anything wrong, or it's not a result of my actions, and if it doesn't harm the community, why am I worried? How does this affect the greater good? Don't get swept away by emotions too quickly. Help others based on what you can offer and what they truly deserve. If someone needs something that's not really essential, don't think of it as a big deal. It's like in movies where someone might want a simple toy as a memory, even if it's just a toy. Remember its true value. When you see people going crazy over something trivial, ask yourself, have you forgotten what's really important? Just because many people want it, doesn't mean you should. Regardless of where I started, I believe I could have succeeded. Success is about having the right mindset, making good choices, and doing good deeds. Book 6. The universe is adaptable and flexible. The force controlling it is inherently good, causing no harm. Everything exists and thrives under its guidance. Do what's right, no matter how you feel cold, tired, praised, criticized, or even facing death. Remember, facing death is just another part of life. Just focus on doing your best in every situation. Reflect and be aware. Understand the true nature and importance of everything. Everything changes quickly. It will either spread out or come together, depending on whether everything is made of the same stuff. The guiding force understands its own nature and how it operates. The best way to respond to someone who has wronged you is to not stoop to their level. Find joy in doing good for others, always keeping in mind a higher purpose or power. The main part of you is what motivates and directs itself, shaping its own destiny and perception of the world. Everything happens according to the natural order of the universe. There's no other force outside or inside it that can change that. The universe is either a mess that keeps getting sorted and messed up again, or a well-organized system. If it's a mess, why worry about it? If it's organized, trust in its creator and feel secure. When life gets tough, 
take a moment to center yourself. Don't let disruptions throw you off for too long. The more you practice, the better you'll handle challenges. Imagine you had a stepmom and a mum. You'd respect both, but spend more time with your real mum. Think of the outside world as your stepmom and your inner peace or philosophy as your real mum. Spend more time with your inner peace. It'll make the outside world more bearable. Remember to see things for what they truly are. That fancy dish is just cooked fish or chicken. That expensive wine, it's grape juice. And that luxurious purple clothing is just sheep's wool dyed with shellfish blood. By understanding the basic nature of things, we can realize they're not as special as they seem. Whenever you're faced with something that looks impressive, break it down to its core and you'll see it's not that grand. Don't get fooled by appearances, even when you think you're working on important stuff. Crates had something similar to say about even the great Xenocrates. Most things people admire can be grouped into a few categories. First, there are simple physical things like rocks, wood, or fruits. Next level up, people might admire living creatures like animals. Then, as people get more sophisticated, they value intelligence, but often only when it's tied to skills, crafts, or maybe the talents of the people around them. But if you truly value intelligence for its universal and collaborative potential, you won't get caught up in these superficial admirations. Instead, you'll focus on nurturing your own mind and working there with others who value the same. Everything is constantly changing. Just as something comes into existence, a part of it is already fading away. The world is always in flux and time keeps moving forward, showing us new moments. In this never-ending flow of life, what's truly worth holding on to? It's like trying to cherish a bird flying by that's already gone. Our lives are brief, like a breath we take. The simple act of breathing, which we started at birth and will end one day, is a part of this fleeting existence. Just existing, like plants, or breathing like animals, isn't special. Being driven by our senses or emotions, living in groups, and eating to survive isn't unique. So, what matters? Seeking applause or fame? Not really, as that's just people making noise. What's truly valuable is acting in a way that's true to who you are. This is the goal of learning and self-improvement, to be the best version of yourself. If you achieve this, you won't desire anything else. But, if you keep valuing countless other things, you'll never find peace independence, or calm. You'll be stuck in jealousy, distrust, and conflict with others who have what you want. To find peace, focus on understanding and respecting yourself. This will align you with others and the universe, and you'll appreciate the journey and guidance you receive. Elements move in all directions, up, down, and around. But the path of true virtue is different and special. It's guided by something higher, and is mysterious to us. It's odd how people often don't appreciate those they live with, but want approval from future generations they'll never meet. It's like being upset that we can't hear our ancestors' compliments. If something seems too hard, don't assume it's impossible. If it's something humans can do, and it's the right thing to do, believe that you can do it too. In sports, if someone accidentally hurts us, we don't hold a grudge. We're cautious around them, but don't treat them like enemies. We should do the same in life. Avoid those who harm us, but don't hate or distrust them. If someone can prove to me that I'm wrong in my thinking or actions, I'll happily change. I'm after the truth, and truth never harmed anyone. What does harm is stubbornly sticking to mistakes or not knowing better. I do what I need to do, and don't get sidetracked by things that don't think or feel. Treat animals and all things with respect and freedom, as someone who can think should. With other people, be friendly and work together. Whenever you're working on something, ask for guidance from a higher power. Don't worry about how long it will last. Even spending three hours on it might be enough. When Alexander the Great and his mule driver passed away, they ended up the same way. Either both went back to the starting point of life, or both became scattered particles. Think about all the different things happening inside each of us, both physically and mentally, all at once. 
it's pretty amazing. Now, imagine the vast number of things happening in the entire universe. It's mind-blowing when you put it in perspective. If someone asked you how to spell the name Antoninus, you'd spell it out for them, right? And if they argued about it, instead of getting mad, wouldn't you just calmly spell it out again? Life's tasks are similar. They're made up of different parts. Instead of getting upset with people who disagree with us, we should calmly handle the situation and move forward. Isn't it unfair to stop people from doing what they believe is best for them? Getting angry at their mistakes is kind of like doing that. People naturally gravitate towards what they think is good for them. If you disagree, instead of getting mad, guide them. Teach them why there might be a better way and do it calmly. Death is when our feelings, emotions, thoughts and physical needs stop. It's really disappointing when someone gives up mentally while their body is still capable. Don't let power go to your head. You might face that challenge. Stay genuine, kind, honest, respectful, quiet, fair, spiritual, loving to your family, and dedicated. Try to be the person philosophy teaches you to be. Respect the higher powers and be there for others. Life is short and the best things you can leave behind are a clear mind and selfless actions. Learn from Antonine's example. Admire his dedication to thinking things through, his calmness, spirituality, kind personality, patience, and how he didn't seek attention. Notice how he understood things deeply, was kind to critics, was never rushed, didn't spread rumors, was observant, was careful with his words, and was fearless and honest. He lived simply, worked hard, got angry slowly, and was a true friend. He was open to different opinions and loved when someone corrected him. He was deeply spiritual, but not blindly following rituals. Live like him, so when your time comes, you're at peace with yourself. Wake up and clear your head. Realize that what troubled you was just like a dream. Now that you're fully awake, treat real life situations the same way you'd treat that dream. I'm made of a body and a mind. The body doesn't really care about things because it can't differentiate between them. The mind, on the other hand, is only affected by its own actions. It only focuses on the present, not bothering about the past or the future. Just as it's natural for our hands or feet to work, it's also natural for humans to put in effort. As long as we're doing what we're meant to do, it's not against our nature. And if it's natural, it can't be bad for us. Think about it. Even people who've done bad things, like thieves, reckless individuals, or even tyrants, have experienced pleasure in their lives. Have you noticed how professionals, like craftsmen, stick to their craft's principles even when catering to the public's wishes? Isn't it sad that architects and doctors seem to value their profession's rules more than we value our own reasoning, which we share with the divine? Asia and Europe are just tiny parts of the universe. The vast ocean is like a single drop, and big mountains are like specks of dirt. Time-wise, the present moment is fleeting in the grand scale of eternity. Everything is small and always changing. All things come from a universal intelligence, whether directly or indirectly. So, things like lion's jaws, poisons, or even thorns are part of this grand design. Don't see them as separate from the beauty and vastness of the universe. Instead, think about where everything originates. If you've experienced the present, you've essentially seen all of history and the future. Everything, though times may change, is similar in nature and shape. Think about how everything in the universe is connected and how they depend on each other. Everything is linked and works together in harmony, following a specific order and unity. Embrace the life you've been given and the people you're surrounded by. Show genuine love and care for those around you. Just like a tool is made for a specific purpose, everything in nature has a purpose and the force that created it remains within. Respect that force and believe that if you follow its guidance, things will fall into place logically, just like everything in the universe does. When we desire things out of our control and don't get them, 
We often blame others, or even the gods. This mindset can lead to unfairness. But if we only focus on what's in our control, we won't have reasons to blame or resent anyone. We're all working together on a big project. Some people know what they're doing and why, while others don't have a clue. Heraclitus believed that even when people are asleep, they're still contributing to the world's progress. Everyone plays a different role, including those who complain and resist change. The world needs all types. So, decide where you fit in. The universe will find a use for you. Just make sure you're not playing a silly, insignificant role, like what Chrysippus mentioned. Think about it. Does the sun try to do the rain's job? Or does Esculapius try to act like Ceres? What about the stars? They're all different, but they work together for a common goal, right? If the gods planned my life, they probably had good reasons. It's hard to imagine them not thinking things through or wanting to hurt me. What would they gain from that? If they didn't plan for me specifically, they planned for the universe as a whole, so I should be okay with whatever happens. If the gods don't plan anything at all, which seems unlikely, then why do we even pray or make sacrifices? But even if the gods don't care about my individual life, I can still think about what's best for me. My purpose aligns with my nature, which is to think and connect with others. My city is Rome, but as a human, I belong to the world. So, what's good for these places is good for me. Everything that happens to an individual benefits the whole community. If you think about it, what's good for one person often turns out to be good for everyone else. Here, the word profit isn't just about money or tangible benefits. It's about the broader idea of something being beneficial. Just like watching the same show over and over can get boring, life can feel repetitive with similar experiences repeating themselves. Everything in life, from start to finish, seems to follow a pattern. So, when will it all come to an end? Always remember the people from the past, from all walks of life and from every corner of the world. Think about famous personalities, philosophers and heroes who've passed away. Remember people like Heraclitus, Pythagoras and Socrates, as well as many other thinkers and leaders. Think about the brilliant minds like Eudoxus and Archimedes and even those who humorously pointed out the short-lived nature of life. All of them have moved on. But is that a bad thing? What matters in life is to live it truthfully, justly and kindly, even towards those who might not be the same towards you. To lift your spirits, think about the good qualities of the people around you. Maybe one person is super active, another is humble and yet another is generous. Celebrating the goodness in others is truly heartwarming. So, Always keep these positive examples in mind. Are you upset about not weighing 300 pounds, but just your current weight? If not, then why be sad about living for a certain number of years and not more? Just as you accept your weight, accept the time you've got. Try to get people on board with your ideas. But if they don't, keep doing what you believe is right. If someone pushes back, stay calm. Don't show that you're affected. Use that challenge to grow in other ways. Remember, you can't achieve the impossible. Your goal was to try, and you did that, even if the outcome wasn't what you expected. People who seek validation find joy in others' actions. Those seeking pleasure find it in their feelings. But wise people find happiness in their efforts. You can choose not to form judgments about things, which will give you peace. External stuff can't decide how you feel or think. Train yourself to really listen to others and try to understand where they're coming from. What doesn't benefit the group doesn't benefit the individual. If passengers criticize their driver or patients doubt their doctor, who will they trust? And how can the driver ensure a safe journey or the doctor guarantee recovery? So many people who were born around the same time as me are no longer here. People with certain conditions see things differently like someone with a liver issue finding sweetness bitter or someone with rabies fearing water. Kids love playing with a ball. So, why should I get upset? Isn't a mistaken belief 
just as influential as these physical conditions. No one can stop you from being true to yourself, and nothing can happen that isn't part of the bigger picture. Think about people's motives, who they want to impress, what they aim to achieve, and how they plan to achieve it. Remember how short life is, and how much is already in the past. Book 7. What's bad behavior? It's the same stuff we've seen over and over. Every time you see it, remember you've seen it before. Look around. It's the same old story. Whether you're looking at history or today's news, it's all been done before and will pass. How can core life values fade if the feelings they evoke are still there? You can always bring those feelings back. I can always have the right perspective. So why stress? Things outside my control shouldn't bother me. Remember this, and you'll stay grounded. See things as you once did, and you can always start fresh. Obsessing over entertainment, possessions, or minor disputes is like dogs fighting over bones or fish chasing bait. It's pointless, like ants carrying loads or mice running scared. Amidst all this, stand strong and kind, and remember what you value defines you. When talking, listen carefully to what's being said. In any task, focus on the action. For tasks, consider the goal, and in conversations, understand the true intent. Do I have the knowledge needed for this task? If I do, I'll use it because it's like a tool nature gave me. If I don't, I'll either step back and let someone more knowledgeable handle it, or, if that's not possible, I'll do my best and collaborate with those who can guide me. Whatever I do, by myself or with others, should benefit the community. Think about all the famous people from the past who are now forgotten, and many who celebrated them are long gone too. It's okay to ask for help. Just like in a team, everyone has a role. If you can't do something on your own, there's no shame in partnering up. Don't stress about the future. When it comes, you'll handle it with the same logic and reasoning you use now. Everything is connected in a special way. Everything is related to everything else, forming a united system. The universe, with all its parts, acts as one. There's a single force running through everything, a shared sense of reason and truth for all beings with the ability to think. Physical things get absorbed into the bigger picture quickly, and every action gets integrated into the grand scheme of things. Memories fade fast in the grand timeline. For thinking beings, living naturally means living logically. Be honest, whether it's natural to you or something you've learned. Just as body parts work together in a body, thinking beings function together in the universe. Remind yourself, I'm part of this vast network of thinkers. If you see yourself as just a small piece, you haven't fully embraced love for humanity. You should love doing good for its own sake and realize that when you do good, you're also benefiting yourself. External events will impact things they can affect. If a part of you is hurt, let that part react. But for me, as long as I don't see it as bad, I'm not harmed. I have the power to choose my perspective. No matter what others say or do, I need to be the best version of myself. It's like gold or gems saying, no matter what happens, I'll shine and be valuable. Your inner self doesn't stress itself out. It doesn't scare itself or want too much. If someone else causes you to feel upset or scared, that's on them. Your inner self, where feelings come from, won't let bad vibes in. Your body might worry about being hurt and might complain when it is. But your soul, where you feel emotions, won't be easily hurt unless you let it. Your true self is free and won't be troubled unless you allow it. Being lucky means having a good mindset. Hey, random thoughts, why are you here? Leave like you came in. I don't need you. You're just an old habit. And while I'm not mad, I'd prefer you go away. Are you afraid of change? Everything comes with it. Change is natural and part of life. Think about it. To warm up your bath, wood has to burn. To eat, your food has to be cooked. Every useful thing involves change. So, the changes in you are just as natural and essential for the world. 
Everything in the universe is constantly moving and changing, just like water in a river. We're all part of this vast universe, working together, just like the parts of our body work in unison. Think about it. History has seen many great thinkers like Chrysippus, Socrates, and Epictetus come and go. Remember this idea whenever you think about anyone or any situation. My main concern is to act according to human nature. I want to do things the way a person should, in line with our natural instincts and desires. A time will come when you'll forget everything, and everyone will forget you too. Our main job as humans is to love, even those who make mistakes. Realize that these people are just like you, and they often make errors without realizing or intending to. Remember, life is short for both you and them. Most importantly, their actions haven't hurt your inner self or character. Nature is always shaping and reshaping everything from a common material, similar to how one might mold and remold wax. It might form a horse, then a tree, then a person, and then something else. These forms are temporary, just like it's not a big deal for a toy to be assembled or disassembled, it's the same with everything in nature. Getting angry all the time isn't natural. If you keep making angry faces, you'll lose your natural charm and won't get it back. Think about this and ask yourself if it's logical. If you can't even see the wrong in getting angry, why continue living that way? Soon, nature, the ultimate force, will change everything you see around you. It'll transform things and then transform them again, keeping the world always fresh. When someone upsets you, think about why they might have done it. Maybe they have a different idea of what's right or wrong. When you understand their perspective, you'll feel sympathy instead of anger. Remember, you might also have some wrong ideas. So, be understanding and forgiving. Once you clear up your misconceptions, you'll find it even easier to be patient with others. Instead of focusing on what you don't have, appreciate what you do have. Think about the best parts of your life and how much you'd miss them if they weren't there. But also, be careful not to become too attached, so if something goes away, you won't be too upset. Take some time to reflect. Your inner thoughts and logic naturally lead to contentment when you act fairly and find peace in doing so. Stop overthinking. Control intense emotions. Focus on the present moment. Understand what happens to you and others. Break things down to understand their origin and substance. Think about your legacy. Let people be responsible for their own mistakes. Pay attention to what's being said. Understand the reasons behind events. Value simplicity, humility, and staying neutral on things that aren't clearly good or bad. Care for others and listen to what the universe or God guides you towards. Everything has an order, even if we think it's just random events. About death. If everything is just made of tiny particles, death is just those particles being rearranged. If there's a greater plan, then death is just moving on to another phase. About pain. If it's unbearable, it'll end. If it continues, you can handle it. Your mind can distract from physical pain and your spirit remains strong. If any part of you suffers, it can deal with it on its own. About fame. Think about how people think what they avoid, and what they chase. Just like how sand piles cover previous layers, current events will overshadow the past. A thought from Plato. To someone who sees the bigger picture of time and existence, does life seem that big? Of course not. So, would such a person fear death? Definitely not. Antisthenes believed that a true leader does good things even if they're criticized for it. It's odd how we can control our facial expressions based on our feelings, but we struggle to control our feelings themselves. Getting mad at things outside of our control is pointless. Those things don't care about our anger. Bring happiness to us and the higher powers. Life is like crops. Some get harvested and some are left untouched. If the universe seems to ignore me and my kids, there's probably a good reason. I stand by what's right and fair, Stay strong and control your emotions. Plato once said that a person shouldn't worry about living or dying, 
but about whether they're doing the right or wrong thing. He also believed that one should stick to their chosen path or position, not fearing death or anything else, except for doing something disgraceful. Plato also expressed that a true person shouldn't just aim to live longer, but should focus on living rightly. Accepting fate and figuring out how to make the best of the time we have is essential. Think about the movement of the stars and the constant change in nature. Reflecting on these things helps clear your mind from everyday distractions. Plato had a cool idea. When talking about people, it's like looking from a mountaintop down on life's events, farming, marriages, deaths, busy cities, quiet lands, diverse cultures, parties, sorrow, business, and how order arises from chaos. History has shown us how empires rise and fall. So, you can predict the future based on the past. Life events follow a pattern, so seeing life for 40 years is like seeing it for thousands of years. What else is there to witness? What comes from the earth goes back to it, and what's divine returns to the heavens. This means either atoms coming apart or eternal elements dispersing. People try all sorts of things to avoid death. For example, food, drugs and incantations. But we have to accept whatever life, or God, throws at us, working hard without complaining. Someone might be stronger than you, but that doesn't make them more selfless, humble, adaptable or forgiving. Whenever we act with reason and align with the natural order of things, shared by both gods and humans, there's nothing to fear. When our actions are in harmony with our true nature, everything is all right. In every situation, be content with what you have, treat others fairly, and always be alert to your thoughts, making sure you fully understand them before acting. Don't waste time trying to figure out what others are thinking. Instead, focus on your path and where life is taking you. Understand the role you're meant to play in the grand scheme of things. We all have a purpose, and for humans, it's to connect and support each other. Our main trait is our ability to socialize and connect with others. Next, it's essential to control our physical desires and not let them dominate our decisions. Our ability to reason should always guide us, keeping our passions and desires in check. Lastly, always be careful and avoid making hasty mistakes. If you keep these principles in mind, you'll be on the right path. Think of your past as done and gone. Live the rest of your life by good principles, like it's an unexpected bonus. Embrace what life throws at you. It's your unique path. What could be more suitable for you than your own journey? When things happen, think about others who faced similar situations. They might have been upset or complained, but now they've moved on. Don't get caught up in those reactions. Instead, focus on how you can use such situations positively. Your main goal should be to feel good about your actions, remembering that the things you're stressing about are usually not that important in the long run. Look within yourself. There's a source of goodness inside you. Keep exploring it, and it'll always provide. Keep your body stable and consistent in its movements and positions. Just like our emotions and thoughts can be read on our face, our body should reflect our inner feelings and intentions too. But don't overdo it or make it look fake. Living life is more like being a wrestler than a dancer. While a dancer moves with planned steps, a wrestler has to be always ready for unexpected moves from his opponent. Always think about the kind of people whose approval you seek. Understand what drives their thoughts and choices. This way, you won't blame those who make honest mistakes and you won't rely too much on their praise. Plato said that deep down, everyone values truth. The same goes for fairness, self-control, kindness, and other good traits. Remembering this will help you be more understanding and patient with others. Whenever you're in pain, remember it's not a sign of weakness and it can't hurt your inner self or your ability to think and connect with others. Think about Epicurus's idea. Pain isn't forever and it's not too much to handle, especially if you focus on its actual impact and don't exaggerate it in your mind. Also, we often deal with discomforts like tiredness, extreme heat, 
or lack of hunger without realizing they're similar to pain. If any of these bother you, remind yourself not to be overwhelmed by pain. Make sure you don't treat unkind people the same way they treat others. Be better than that. Why do we think Telauges wasn't as smart as Socrates? It's not just because Socrates faced challenges bravely, argued well, or stood up for what's right, like refusing to arrest an innocent person. It's more about Socrates' character. He was content doing the right thing, respected both people and gods, wasn't easily bothered by others' mistakes, and never let his physical desires control him. Our soul isn't so tied to our body that it can't think and act on its own. You can be amazing and not get noticed, and that's okay. Remember, a good life is based on a few simple things. Even if you don't become a top scholar, you can still be a kind, humble person who listens to their inner moral compass and believes in a higher power. You have the ability to remain calm and unaffected, no matter how much negativity surrounds you or whatever challenges you face. Even if everyone was against you or you faced life-threatening dangers, your inner self can stay peaceful. You can see things for what they truly are, not just how they appear to others. Every situation presents an opportunity to respond with reason and kindness, drawing on the strengths inherent in both humans and the divine. Nothing that happens is surprising or too challenging. Everything is familiar and manageable. The highest moral standard is to live every day as if it's your last, staying genuine, active and sincere. The gods, despite being eternal, aren't bothered by constantly dealing with the wrongdoings of so many people over endless time. They even continue to care for them. Yet you, who have a limited time, find it hard to tolerate others, even though you're not perfect either. It's silly to focus on other people's flaws when you should be addressing your own, especially since you can change yourself, but not others. Anything that doesn't serve a logical or social purpose is considered less important by our rational mind. When you do something good for someone, that's the reward in itself. Don't expect praise or something in return like some people do. People don't get tired of things that benefit them. Since acting naturally benefits both you and others, keep doing it without getting tired. Nature created a structured world. Everything either follows a set pattern or has a purpose. Remembering this will help you stay calm in many situations. Book 8 Remember, it's too late to make your entire life seem like that of a perfect philosopher, especially since many know you're far from being wise. You face challenges, and it's not easy to be seen as a philosopher now. So, stop worrying about what others think of you. Just live as long as you naturally can, even if it's a short time. Focus on understanding and following your true nature without distractions. You've tried many things seeking happiness, theories, wealth, fame, pleasures, but none brought real joy. True happiness is in playing your role as a human being. How? By guiding your actions with strong values. Which values? Recognize that genuine good empowers you with justice, moderation, courage, and freedom. Anything that doesn't bring these qualities can't be beneficial. Before you act, ask yourself, will this be good for me? Will I regret it? Remember, life is short, and soon, everything will be gone. What's important is that your current actions align with being a thoughtful and social person, living by the same principles as the gods. Think about it. What did powerful figures like Alexander, Caesar, and Pompey truly achieve compared to thinkers like Diogenes, Heraclitus, and Socrates. The latter group understood the deeper truths of life and were at peace with themselves, while the former were often caught up in their ambitions and bound by their desires. People will do what they want, regardless of whether you complain or disagree. Stay calm, no matter what. Everything happens for a reason in the grand scheme of things. Remember, like past greats, such as Hadrian and Augustus, you too will one day be just a memory. So, focus on understanding situations and being a good person. Do what's right with kindness, humility and honesty. 
Change is a natural part of life. Things move and transform, but there's no need to be afraid of these shifts. Everything follows a pattern and balance. Everything happens as it should. Every living thing thrives when it stays true to its nature. People thrive when they believe in truths, act selflessly, focus on what they can control, and accept life's events. Just like a leaf is part of a tree, we are all part of the universe. While a leaf is part of a system that doesn't think or feel, we are part of a universe that has purpose and order. Everything has its place and time in the universe. But don't expect everything to be exactly alike. Instead, see the bigger picture and how things relate to each other as a whole. You might say you don't have time to read, but you always have time to be humble and in control of your emotions. You have the time to rise above temptations, to not get angry with ungrateful people, and even to show them kindness. Stop complaining about life's challenges, even to yourself. No more negative talk about it. Regret happens when we miss out on something beneficial. Good things are always beneficial in some way and deserve our attention. A wise person wouldn't regret missing out on fleeting pleasures. So, pleasures aren't truly beneficial or good. For everything, ask. What is it really? What's it made of? Why does it exist? What's its role in the world? How long will it last? When you don't want to get out of bed, remember that being social and active is part of being human. Both animals and humans sleep, but it's in our nature to connect and be active. That's what feels right and good for us. Always challenge your thoughts using logic, morality, and critical thinking. Whenever you meet someone, think, what do they believe is right or wrong? If you understand their beliefs about pleasure, pain, success, and life, you'll get why they act the way they do. It's just how they see the world. Just as you shouldn't be surprised a fig tree gives figs, don't be shocked when the world works as it always has. A doctor shouldn't be shocked by illness, and a sailor shouldn't be surprised by changing winds. Remember, changing your mind or taking advice from someone doesn't mean you're not free. You're choosing to act based on your judgment and understanding. If you have control over an action, why do it this way? If someone else is in control, who can you blame? Atoms or some higher power? Blaming either doesn't make sense. So, don't blame anyone. If you can, fix the root of the problem. If not, at least address the outcome. If you can't do either, then complaining is pointless. Always have a reason for what you do. When something dies, it doesn't leave the universe. It transforms into different elements, just like everything else, including you. These elements also change, so don't be upset about it. Everything, like horses and plants, has a purpose. This shouldn't be surprising. Even the sun has its role in the universe, as do other forces. What's your purpose? Is it just to enjoy life? See if that idea truly resonates with your inner self. Nature has intentions for everything, from its start to its end. Consider a ball being thrown. Its rise has a purpose, and so does its fall. When it's on the ground, is that bad? Is it bad when a bubble pops or a lamp goes out? Everything has its time and place. Think about the inside of our bodies. They age, get sick, and eventually break down. People who give and receive praise, or those who remember and are remembered, they're all temporary, especially in this tiny part of the world. Here, even in such a small space, people can't get along, not even with themselves. And in the grand scheme, our entire world is just a tiny dot. Focus on what's in front of you, whether it's a thought, action, or word. If you're facing challenges, it's because you're hoping to be better in the future instead of working on being better now. Whatever I do, I'll do it to help others. Whatever happens to me, I'll accept it and believe it's part of the universe's plan where everything is connected. Think about the stuff you deal with when taking a bath, the dirty water, the grime. It's kind of gross, right? Life has its messy parts too. People pass away all the time. Lucilla lost Verus and then passed away herself. It happened with Secunda 
and Maximus, Epitinchanus and Diotimus, Antoninus and Faustina, and Cella and Hadrian. It's the cycle of life. Even those who thought they could predict the future or were very proud of themselves, where are they now? People like Carax, Demetrius and others, they were significant for a while, but now they're either forgotten, turned into stories or not even remembered at all. So, remember this. One day, the essence that is you will either scatter, the spark of life within you will go out, or it'll move to another place. True happiness comes from doing what's right. This means being kind to others, not getting caught up in our feelings, questioning our assumptions, and understanding the bigger picture of the universe and how everything connects. We all have three key relationships with the responsibilities of our lives, with the greater force or universe that connects everything, and with the people around us. Pain is either a physical thing, and if so, let our bodies respond, or it's mental. But our minds can stay calm and not see pain as a bad thing. Our thoughts, plans, wants, and dislikes are all in our mind, which can stay unaffected by harm. Get rid of misleading thoughts and remind yourself, I have the power to keep my mind free from harm, desire and chaos. Remembering the true nature of things helps me use them wisely. Always remember this inner strength you have. Whether you're speaking in a formal setting or just chatting, prioritize being sincere and meaningful over just sounding good. Always speak with integrity. Think about famous courts and families from history like that of Augustus. All those people, his family, friends and advisors, have passed away. Think about families that ended with no one left to carry on their name. Even if ancestors wanted a long line of descendants, eventually one would be the last. And with that person's passing, the entire lineage ends. Live each moment of your life in a way that if that moment achieves its purpose, it's enough. No one can stop you from doing this. Sure, there might be external challenges, but those can't prevent you from being fair, self-controlled, or wise. If one plan gets blocked, adapt gracefully and find another way. Doing so still aligns with living a purposeful life. When good things come your way, accept them without getting arrogant. If you have to let them go, do so without fuss. Imagine seeing a hand or a foot severed from the body and lying lifeless. That's what someone becomes when they complain too much, isolate themselves, or act selfishly. If you feel disconnected from the bigger picture, remember you were meant to be a part of it. But the awesome thing is, even if you feel separated, you can always reconnect. This second chance isn't common, but it's a special gift given to humans. Just as nature adapts and uses everything that comes her way, we too have the ability to take any obstacle and use it to our advantage. This is one of the unique skills that rational beings like us have. Don't get overwhelmed by thinking about your entire life or all the potential problems you might face. When you encounter a problem, ask yourself, is it really that bad? Usually it's not. Remember, it's only the present moment that can affect you, not the past or future. If you focus only on the present challenge and remind yourself that it's just one issue, it'll be easier to handle. Do people still mourn long-gone leaders like Verus or Hadrian? Probably not. And even if they did, would those leaders know or care? Even if they did care, those mourners won't live forever. So. What's the point of mourning indefinitely for a body that's just flesh and bones? If you're good at something, use that skill wisely. When I think about human virtues, I don't see anything that stops us from being fair. But I do see self-control that helps us resist physical temptations. Change the way you think about things that hurt you, and you'll be on solid ground. Think with reason. If you're not feeling logical, that's okay. Just don't let your logical side get hurt. Let any other part of you that feels pain deal with it based on its own understanding. Just like when any of our senses are blocked, it's bad for our nature, or when plants get obstructed, it's bad for them. For us, 
with our ability to reason, it's bad when our understanding is blocked. Think about this in your own life. Do you feel pain or pleasure? That's for your senses to deal with. If something messes up your plans, it's because you didn't plan with possible changes in mind. If you had, you wouldn't be upset. Nothing can stop our mind from doing its thing. No matter what's thrown at it, when it's focused, nothing can hurt it. I shouldn't stress myself out, especially since I've never purposely upset anyone. Everyone has their own way of finding happiness. For me, it's making sure my mind is healthy, not resenting anyone, and handling whatever comes my way with a positive attitude. I want to see the good in everything, and use everything as it should be used. Make the most of the present. People who want to be remembered don't realize that future generations will be just like the ones who annoy them now, and those people will also have their time come to an end. After that, why should you care about what they think or say about you? No matter where I go or what life throws at me, I'll stay true to myself and find inner peace. Why let any event disturb my peace of mind? Is anything really worth losing my inner calm over? Everything that happens is a natural part of life. Just like animals and plants face situations typical for their species, humans face human challenges. Why get upset about things that are just part of the natural order? You've got the strength to handle whatever life brings. If something outside of you is bothering you, it's not the thing itself, but how you perceive it. You have the power to change that perception. If you're upset about something in your character, you can work on it. If a task feels important and you're upset about not doing it, then either get to it or accept. There might be reasons out of your control preventing you. If you feel life isn't worth living without completing that task, then leave life gracefully, holding no resentment towards any obstacles. Remember that your mind is strongest when it sticks to its decisions, even if they seem stubborn. Imagine how powerful it becomes when those decisions are well thought out and rational. A mind free from emotional chaos is like a fortified castle. There's no safer place to be. If someone doesn't realize this, they're missing out. And if they do realize it, but don't act on it, they're making themselves unhappy. Only believe what you directly observe. If someone says they spoke badly about you, that's all you know. It doesn't mean it hurt you. If your child looks sick, that's all you see. It doesn't mean they're in serious danger. Stick to what you directly know and don't add your own assumptions. If you do this, remember, everything is a part of life's journey. You'll be okay. If something isn't to your liking, just avoid it. If your path has obstacles, find a way around. Don't waste time questioning why these challenges exist. Just like a woodworker has wood shavings as a byproduct, nature has its byproducts too. But unlike a workshop, nature doesn't throw anything away. Instead, nature is amazing because it recycles everything, turning what seems like waste into something new. Nature works perfectly within its own space and resources. Don't rush in what you do. Be clear when you speak and stand firm in your beliefs. Keep your emotions in check and don't let life's pace overwhelm you. Even if people criticize you or try to bring you down, it doesn't mean you have to let it affect your inner peace and values. Think of yourself like a clear fountain. Even if someone throws dirt into it, the fountain will quickly clear it out and remain pure. To maintain this inner peace, live every moment with calmness, honesty and humility. If you don't understand the bigger picture of the universe, you won't know your role in it. If you're clueless about its purpose, you won't understand yourself or the world around you. Without this understanding, you'll be lost about your own purpose in life. So, why would you care about the opinions of those who are equally lost? Why seek approval from someone who's constantly unhappy with themselves? Why try to impress someone who regrets most of their own actions? Don't just breathe and be in sync with the air around you. Try to connect with the universal intelligence that's everywhere. Just like air is everywhere for us to breathe, this intelligence is available for everyone who's open to it. There's no evil powerful enough to destroy the world. When someone does something bad, it primarily harms them, not others. The good news is, if they decide to change, 
they can free themselves from this negative behavior. I don't let another person's decisions or feelings dictate my own. Even though we're all connected and impact each other, each of us has control over our actions and feelings. This means someone else's bad choices can't ruin my peace of mind. It's a system designed so that others can't make us unhappy. Think of understanding like sunlight. The sun shines everywhere, touches everything, yet never runs out. If you've ever seen a beam of light shining into a dark room through a small opening, you'll notice it travels straight and reflects when it hits a surface, lighting up what's around. It doesn't force its way in or get lost. It simply lights up what's open to it. If something doesn't let the light in, it just stays in the dark. Similarly, understanding flows smoothly, lights up open minds, and those who don't accept it are just keeping themselves in the dark. If you're afraid of death, you're either scared of feeling nothing or experiencing something new. If you feel nothing, then there's nothing to worry about. If you feel something different, you're still alive, just in a new way. We're all here to help and support each other, so either teach people to be better or be patient with them. Just like an arrow follows its path, our minds, even when thinking carefully or deciding on a goal, move forward towards their target. Try to understand what drives others and let them understand what drives you. Book 9. Doing wrong harms the natural balance since everything in nature is designed to work together harmoniously. Lying is also harmful. The universe operates on truth, and lying, whether intentional or not, disrupts that harmony. It's like fighting against the universe's design. Those who chase pleasure and avoid pain without considering the bigger picture can also cause imbalance. This mindset often leads to blaming the universe when bad people get good things or vice versa. Fearing pain or constantly seeking pleasure can lead to unjust actions, which is not in line with the natural order. We should be neutral about things that the universe treats neutrally, like pain, pleasure, life, death, or reputation. If we're not, we're acting against nature. Everything happens in the universe for a reason, stemming from an original plan set in motion by a higher force. This force designed a beautiful, interconnected system where everything has its place and purpose. Ideally, it's best to live a life free from lies, fake behavior, excess, and vanity. If not, it's better to move on from life once you're tired of these negative traits. Why would you choose to stay surrounded by negativity? A corrupt mind is even worse than any disease because it affects our human essence, not just our physical health. It's like a mental illness that's more damaging than any physical illness. Don't fear death. Accept it as a natural part of life, just like growing up, getting old, or any other life phase. Just as we anticipate the birth of a child, we should view death as another step in life's journey. However, don't be careless or overly dramatic about it. See it as a natural process. If you need some comfort, think about the chaos and differing values of the world you're leaving behind. You shouldn't be angry with the world, but be compassionate and understanding towards it. But also remember, you're leaving a world where many don't share your beliefs. If everyone did, maybe staying would be more appealing. But given the challenges of our differences, it's understandable to welcome the peace that comes with moving on. When someone does wrong, they're really hurting themselves by becoming a worse person. People can be unfair, not just by what they do, but also by what they fail to do. Be content with your current beliefs if you're sure of them, with your actions if they benefit society, and with your feelings if you're at peace with what life brings you. Clear away negative thoughts, control sudden urges, manage your desires, and always stay in charge of your actions. All animals share a single soul. However, all thinking beings share one collective intelligence. Just like there's one earth for everything on it, and for everyone who can see and breathe, there's one light and one air. All things naturally gravitate towards what's similar to them. Just like elements in nature, such as earth settling down or liquids merging, things that are alike tend to come together unless something stops them. 
Fire, for example, rises and can quickly spread because it's attracted to its own kind. Similarly, beings with intellect or consciousness are even more inclined to connect with those similar to them. This is why we see animals forming groups, like swarms or herds, and showing care for their young. Even among creatures with higher intelligence, there are communities, families, and forms of cooperation. Just think about how even stars, though far apart, seem to have a connection. However, ironically, it's only humans, the most advanced beings, who sometimes forget to connect and support each other. Yet, no matter how much we might resist, our nature to come together always wins out. It's harder to find an isolated human than it is to find a piece of Earth that doesn't connect with other earthy elements. Everyone and everything, including humans, the universe, and even the divine, have their own time to shine and contribute. Just like plants have their seasons to bear fruit, our minds and reason give results based on their nature and timing. If you can help others understand better, do it. If not, remember to be kind and patient just as the divine powers are with us, even helping us with our desires and goals. Why not be as understanding as they are? When facing challenges or pain, handle it without seeking sympathy or admiration. Your only goal should be to act in a way that benefits the community and is wise. Today, I've freed myself from stress. Actually, I've realized that the real stress was in my own thoughts and beliefs, not outside of me. Everything we experience is temporary and often ordinary. Today's world isn't much different from the times of our ancestors. External things don't tell us anything about themselves. So, who makes judgments about them? Our mind. It's not about how we feel, but what we do that defines our goodness or badness. Our virtues or flaws are shown by our actions, not feelings. Just like a stone doesn't care if it's thrown up or falls down, it's neutral. Look deep into people's minds and you'll see the standards they're scared of not meeting and how they judge themselves. Everything is constantly changing. You're changing too, and so is the entire universe. Someone else's mistakes? That's for them to deal with, not you. Ending an action, desire or opinion is like letting them go. It's not a bad thing. Think about the different stages of life, childhood, youth, adulthood, old age. Moving from one stage to another is just like letting go. So, why be afraid? Remember the times under your grandparents, then your mum, then your dad. With all those changes, was there ever a reason to be scared? Similarly, there's no reason to fear the changes and endings in life. Quickly check in with yourself, the world around you, and the person who upset you. Remind yourself to be fair. Remember you're a part of a bigger universe and try to understand if the other person acted knowingly or not. Also, remember that person is connected to you in some way. We're all part of a bigger community and everything we do should benefit that community. If what you're doing isn't helping the community, either directly or indirectly, then it's not aligning with the bigger picture. It's like being in a team and not playing along with everyone else. People argue over petty things, just like kids fighting over toys. We're all just souls dealing with the temporary nature of life. Think of it like a play about life and death. It helps put things in perspective. When faced with an issue, strip it down to its core. Think about its essence and how long it will truly matter in the grand scheme of things. You faced a lot of unnecessary stress because you weren't content with doing what you're naturally good at. It's time to let go of that. When someone criticizes or dislikes you, try to understand their perspective. Realize that their opinion shouldn't bother you. But remember, be kind to them. They're just like you. The universe supports them too, guiding them in various ways. Life's patterns are consistent. Things always cycle between highs and lows. Either there's a universal force guiding each event, so we should accept what it brings, or everything happens based on a predetermined plan, or it's completely random. Bottom line, if there's a higher power, things are good. If it's all random, we shouldn't live randomly. Soon, we'll all be buried.
and even the Earth will change. When you think about how fast things change, it makes everything else seem insignificant. Everything is connected, like a stream moving everything along. It's funny to see people thinking they've got it all figured out, especially when they act like they're both wise and influential. Stay focused on what you need to do now. If you can make a difference, do it without worrying about who's watching or trying to create a perfect world. Be content with small successes, as changing people's minds is tough. They often pretend to agree, but feel trapped by their own beliefs. Think of historical figures like Alexander and Philip. Did they truly understand life's purpose and act accordingly? If they were just putting on a show, that's not for me. Philosophy is about simplicity and humility. Don't get lost chasing empty glory. Imagine looking down from a high place and seeing countless people going about their lives, celebrating, traveling in good and bad weather, and experiencing life's ups and downs. Think about the many who lived before you, those who will come after, and even those from different cultures. A lot of them don't know you, and many who do will soon forget or even criticize you. Remember, chasing after lasting fame or current praise isn't really worth it. Stay calm and don't let external things shake you. Act with fairness and focus on doing good for the community. It's what aligns with your true nature. Many worries are unnecessary and come from your own perceptions. Let them go to simplify your life. Understand the big picture of the universe. Think about the concept of forever and realize how quickly things change. Consider how brief life is compared to the vastness of time before and after it. Everything you see will eventually end and those who witness these endings will also pass away. Whether someone lives a long life or a short one, the outcome is the same. What are people really like on the inside? What drives them and why do they care about certain things? Try to see their true selves. When they think their criticism hurts or their compliments benefit us, they're really just full of themselves. Change isn't a loss. It's just a natural process that the universe enjoys. Things have always evolved this way and will continue to do so. So, how can you argue that everything has always been and will always be bad? With so many powerful forces out there, isn't it possible that everything is actually in balance and not doomed to endless suffering? Everything is made up of simple, often unappealing components. Water, dirt, bones, and decay. Even what we value, like marble, gold, or clothing, comes from basic elements like earth or hair. Breath, too, is just air moving in and out, always changing. Stop stressing over this difficult life and overthinking things. Why are you so upset? Have you not faced such issues before? Think about what's bothering you. Is it the situation? Analyze it. Is it the details? Look at them closely, too. Beyond these, there's nothing else. Remember, whether you experience life for a hundred years or just three, it's essentially the same journey. If someone did something wrong, it's their problem. And maybe they didn't even do anything wrong. Everything either comes from one main source, working together as one unit, in which case you shouldn't complain if it's for the greater good. Or everything is just random and eventually falls apart. So why worry? Remind yourself, You've been through tough times, faced challenges, and you've adapted like everyone else. Think about it. Either the gods can help us, or they can't. If they can't, then why bother praying? But if they can, why not ask them to help us not fear, desire, or grieve about things outside of our control instead of asking for specific outcomes? If they can help us, it makes sense they'd assist with our mindset rather than external events. Maybe you think, well, I have control over my mindset. If so, isn't it better to focus on what you can control and stay free rather than obsessing over uncontrollable things and feeling trapped? Who's to say the gods don't help with our mindset too? Try praying this way and see what happens. Instead of praying, I want that person to like me. Pray, may I be okay whether they like me or not. Shift your prayers like this and notice the difference.
Epicurus had a unique perspective. Even when he was sick, he didn't complain about his health. Instead, he kept discussing philosophy, exploring how the mind can stay calm even when the body is suffering. He didn't let doctors act as if they were the most important people in the room. He remained cheerful. So, if you face challenges, stick to your beliefs and principles. Don't get caught up in the drama or negativity that others might focus on. Stay grounded, focus on the task at hand and the best way to tackle it. When someone's behavior upsets you, like if they're rude or dishonest, ask yourself, can the world exist without such people? It can't. So, accept that such people will always be around. Instead of getting angry, understand that every wrongdoer is just someone who's lost their way. Ask yourself how their actions truly affect you. You'll realize that they haven't harmed your inner self or your ability to think and reason. If they act wrongly, it's because they haven't been taught better. Maybe you should have expected them to act this way and prepared yourself for it. If you're upset about someone's betrayal or lack of gratitude, think about your role in the situation. Did you trust someone who was untrustworthy? Or did you do a favor expecting something in return? When you do a good deed, do it without expecting a reward. It should feel good just to do the right thing. Just like eyes don't need a reward for seeing or feet for walking. Doing good for others is our natural purpose. And when we do, we're just fulfilling our role. Book 10. Hey soul, will you ever be true to yourself, transparent and content? Will you ever feel complete without chasing after pleasures or wishing for more time and better surroundings? Can you be happy right where you are, right now? Can you believe that everything you have is exactly what you need and that whatever comes your way is for the best? Can you see yourself as part of a bigger picture where everything is connected and constantly changing for a purpose? And most importantly, can you feel connected to the world around you in harmony with both the divine and other people? Listen to what your natural instincts tell you. If it's good for you and doesn't harm your well-being, go for it. Remember, being rational also means being considerate of others. Stick to these guidelines and don't overthink it. Whatever comes your way, you're either equipped to handle it or you're not. If you can, deal with it without complaining. If you can't, it'll eventually pass. Just know that your mindset can make any situation bearable if you see the benefit or purpose behind it. If someone's making a mistake, kindly guide them. If you can't help them see the error, then either look at what you might be doing wrong or let it go. Everything that happens is a part of a grand plan that's been set for you since forever. Your life and its events have always been connected in this vast web of existence. Whether everything is made of tiny particles or there's a universal rule guiding everything, two things are clear. First, I'm a small piece of a big universe that follows certain rules. Second, I'm connected to other beings like me. Keeping this in mind, I won't complain about what life gives me because what's good for the whole universe is good for me too. The universe is designed not to harm itself. So, if I remember I'm a part of this universe, I'll be content with what comes my way. Also, since I'm connected to others, I'll act in a way that benefits everyone and avoids causing harm. This way, my life will be meaningful, much like how a person feels fulfilled when contributing positively to their community. The things that make up the universe are always changing and transforming. If parts of the universe are meant to change, it doesn't make sense to think that nature intended to harm its parts or that it overlooked this change. It's just how things are. So, it's strange to be upset when things change or end because that's just nature's way. Besides, everything eventually breaks down into its basic elements, either getting scattered or turning back into earth and air. It's not like these elements have been with you since birth. They come from the food you eat and the air you breathe. Even if these recent elements influence you a bit more, the fact remains, change is a natural part of the universe's design. Adopt these qualities, being kind, humble, honest, wise, patient, and strong. Make sure you stick to them, and if you lose track, quickly get back on course. Remember, 
Being wise means being observant and attentive. Patience means accepting what life throws at you, and strength means prioritizing your mental well-being over physical discomfort or fear of things like death. If you can truly live by these qualities without needing validation from others, you'll transform your life. But if you keep getting distracted or messing up, it's okay to step back and find a place where you can refocus. Or if things get too tough, know when to gracefully exit, ensuring you've done at least one thing right. Always remember, just like trees are meant to bear fruit and dogs are meant to hunt, humans have a purpose too. So, aim to be the best version of yourself, not for praise, but to grow and fulfill your purpose. Modern life with its distractions like movies, war, fear, laziness, and people-pleasing can make you forget the important lessons you've learned from observing the world around you. Whenever you do something, not only should you complete the task, but also learn from it and build confidence from that knowledge. Don't show off, but don't hide your knowledge either. Will you ever truly understand simplicity and dignity? Can you see things for what they truly are, where they fit in the world, how long they last, what they're made of, and who they belong to? A spider feels proud catching a fly. One person feels the same catching a small animal, another catching a tiny fish, another hunting bigger animals, and another defeating an enemy in battle. But aren't they all just showing off, if you really think about their motives? Learn to see how everything is connected and transforms into one another. Keep practicing this perspective. It'll help you develop a broader mindset. By understanding this, you realize that we're all temporary in this world, which makes you act fairly and in harmony with the universe. Don't worry about others' opinions. Focus on doing the right thing and embracing your journey. Such a person is calm and only wishes to act rightly and in alignment with the universe. If you're unsure about something, take a step back and seek advice. If you know what's right, then move forward confidently. If challenges come up, handle them wisely and always lean towards fairness. By always following reason, you'll find peace but will be ready to act when needed, always staying positive and balanced. Every morning, remind yourself, does it matter if someone else does the right thing? No. Remember the true nature of people who are quick to judge others. Think about their actions and priorities. Don't let them distract you. Focus on maintaining your integrity and staying true to your values. Nature gives and takes everything. A wise and humble person would say, give what you want, take what you want. And they'd say this genuinely, not to show off, but out of real respect for nature. You've got limited time left in life. Live like you're on top of the world. No matter where you are, live as a good person, true to the world's values. Let people see you living authentically. If they can't handle it, and it comes to it, better to die standing for what's right than live their way. Stop just talking about what it means to be a good person. Just be one. Always think about the vastness of time and the universe. Realize that everything, when broken down, is simple and small, like a seed or a twist of a drill. Look around and understand that everything is changing, fading, or on its way out. Everything is temporary. Think about how people are in their daily lives, eating, sleeping, or doing basic stuff. Then see them acting all important, or getting mad, or acting like they're better than others. Remember, not long ago, many of them were taking orders from someone else. Where will they be soon? Whatever happens by nature's design is beneficial for everyone, and it's always at the right time. The earth enjoys the rain, just as the sky does. The universe likes to make things happen. So, I'll tell the universe, I love what you love. It's like when we say, such things just like to happen. You're either living your usual life here, going somewhere else because you want to, or you're passing away, having done your duties. That's pretty much it. So, stay strong. Remember this, a quiet place in the countryside is just like anywhere else. Life goes on the same, whether you're on a mountain, at the beach, or anywhere. A wise person can find peace anywhere, 
turning any place into their own sanctuary. I need to think about what my soul means to me. What am I turning it into? How am I using it? Is it lacking understanding? Does it feel disconnected from the bigger picture? Or is it too tied to my physical body, following every little desire? Someone who runs from their responsibilities is like a person escaping from their boss. Our duty is to follow the natural laws of life. If you break them, you're running away. If you can't accept things that have happened or will happen because of destiny, then you're also running away. If you're upset, scared or angry about it, you're not facing your responsibilities. When a man contributes to conception, he leaves and then nature takes over to grow a baby. It's incredible how a baby forms from just that start. Similarly, when a child eats, the body magically transforms it into energy, feelings and growth. Think about these hidden processes and recognize the force behind them, just as we notice things falling or rising, even if we can't see the force itself. Realize that history repeats itself. What's happening now has happened before and will happen again. Think about all the events and stories you've heard from the past, like the courts of famous leaders like Hadrian, Antoninus, Philip, Alexander or Croesus. The situations were the same, just with different people involved. Picture someone complaining or fussing about something as a pig, unwillingly getting ready for sacrifice. And if someone's sulking alone about life's challenges, remember, only rational beings, like humans, can choose to accept what happens. Everyone else just goes along with it because they have to. Whenever you do something, ask yourself if the fear of death is because you'd miss doing that particular thing. When someone's actions upset you, take a moment to reflect on your own flaws. Think about times when you might have given too much importance to money, fleeting pleasures, or a brief moment of fame. This perspective will help calm your anger. Remember, often people act a certain way because they feel they have no other choice. If you can, try to help them see another way. When you come across people like Soterio the Socratic, Remember others like Eutyches or Hymen. If you think of Euphrates, remember Eutychio or Silvanus. When you meet Alciphron, recall Tropaeophorus, and with Xenophon, think of Crito or Severus. Every time you think about yourself, consider figures like the Caesars or any other person. Ask yourself, where are they now? The answer, gone, lost in the vastness of time. Everything in life is fleeting, like smoke. So why worry so much? Just focus on making the best of your short time here. Everything around you is an opportunity to learn and grow. Embrace all experiences, just as a strong stomach digests all kinds of food, or how a bright fire can turn everything into light and warmth. Make sure no one can genuinely say that you aren't straightforward, honest, and kind. If someone thinks otherwise, prove them wrong through your actions. This is something you can control. Decide to be a good and genuine person, and if you feel you can't be, then perhaps it's time to re-evaluate your life's purpose. Reason doesn't want you to live a life that's not true to yourself. Ask yourself, what's the best action or response in this situation? Whatever that answer is, you have the freedom to act or speak that way. Don't make excuses or think you're limited. You'll only find peace when you fully embrace your potential and see every opportunity as a chance to act in line with your true self. Find joy in every action that aligns with your true nature. This freedom is yours everywhere. Think about it. A cylinder can't always roll the way it's meant to, just as water, fire, or anything governed solely by nature or an irrational mind can't always move or act freely. There are obstacles everywhere, but our rational mind can navigate any challenge and stay true to its purpose. Remember how effortlessly reason can navigate challenges, like how fire rises or a stone falls. Don't overcomplicate things. The only real challenges we face are either physical or come from our own perceptions and beliefs. And the truth is, these challenges don't make us worse. They offer opportunities to become better. Lastly, Remember that nothing harms an individual if it doesn't harm the community. And nothing harms the community 
if it doesn't harm its guiding principles or laws. So, anything that doesn't harm these principles can't harm the community or its members. For someone rooted in true values, even the simplest reminder can keep them free from sadness or fear. Consider this. Leaves fall, but trees produce more every spring. Similarly, as one generation of people ends, another begins. Your children, those who praise or criticize you, and even those who remember you, are all like these leaves, temporary. They come into existence for a while and then are replaced by others. Everything has a limited lifespan, yet we behave as if some things are eternal. Soon, you'll pass away and someone else will mourn your loss. A healthy eye should appreciate all it sees without demanding only specific colors, just as a good ear should be open to all sounds. In the same way, a healthy mind should be prepared for any eventuality. Wanting only specific outcomes, like desiring only praise or wanting only good for our loved ones, is as limiting as an eye wanting only to see green or teeth. No matter how fortunate a person is, when they're on their deathbed, someone will be relieved they're going. If the person was good and wise, someone might think, finally, I won't feel judged by him anymore. That's for a good person. For me, there are even more reasons why many would be glad to see me go. When I'm dying, I'll think, I'm leaving a world where even those I cared for might want me gone, maybe even hoping to benefit from it. Why cling to life then? But don't leave with bitterness. Stay kind and gracious. Leave the world peacefully, not forcefully, just like a natural death where the soul easily leaves the body. Nature brought us together with others, and now it's time to part. Leave as if saying goodbye to family, accepting it's time to go. Always try to understand why someone does something, but start with yourself. Reflect on your own actions first. Remember that what drives our actions is the inner spirit. That's the real essence of a person. Don't mistake this force for the physical body it resides in. Other than being part of us, our body parts are tools, just like a carpenter's axe. Without the guiding spirit, they're as useful as a pen without a writer. Book 11. The rational soul has unique traits. It's self-aware, self-regulating, and can shape its own destiny. While plants and animals produce for others, the soul creates for itself. No matter when life ends, the soul remains complete. It's like an actor whose performance remains intact, regardless of interruptions. The soul understands the vast universe, eternity, and the repetitive nature of existence. A 40-year-old, given the repetitive nature of life, has essentially experienced what past and future generations will. The soul values love, honesty, humility, and self-respect, aligning with universal justice. If you break down a song into individual notes or a dance into specific moves, they lose their appeal. Ask yourself if each note or move impresses you, and you'll likely say no. This way of thinking should apply to most things, except for virtues and good deeds. Always break things down to their basics, to truly understand, and often to see their insignificance in the broader scheme of life. Imagine being at peace with the idea of leaving this world, whether it means ceasing to exist or transforming into something else. This acceptance should come from personal reflection, not just stubbornness. It should be genuine and without any dramatic flair, inspiring others to feel the same way. Have I contributed to the greater good? Isn't that beneficial for me too? Keep this idea close and always act on it. What's your true skill? Doing good. And how can you achieve that? By understanding the bigger picture of nature and specifically human nature. Tragedy in theater was created to show us that certain events are inevitable. It reminds us that if we can enjoy these stories on stage, we shouldn't be overly upset by similar events in the real world. Some playwrights have shared valuable insights like, if the gods ignore me and my kids, there's a good reason. Being mad at external events is pointless. Life should be enjoyed like we enjoy ripe grains of corn. After tragedies, the old comedy came along 
speaking truths and teaching us humility. Diogenes had a similar approach. Then, there was the middle comedy, followed by the new comedy, which eventually just became about clever imitation. While the new comic writers had some good points, what was the real purpose behind all their work and performances? It's clear that your current life is perfectly suited for philosophical exploration. Just as a branch separated from its tree is no longer part of that tree, a person who distances himself from another breaks away from the larger human community. This distancing often happens due to negative feelings like hatred. However, thanks to the wisdom of Zeus, we always have the chance to reconnect and become part of the larger whole. But, the more separations that occur, the harder it is to rejoin. And a naturally connected branch is different from one that's been reattached. If people challenge your natural decisions, don't let them deter you or make you feel negatively towards them. Stay committed to your beliefs but also be kind to those who disagree. Being angry with them or giving up are both signs of weakness. Walking away or not supporting your friends and family is just as bad. One nature is superior to any human-made art since all arts are inspired by nature. Therefore, the vast universe, the grandest form of nature, is above all human creations. Just as artists use raw materials to create something greater Nature does the same, leading to values like justice. This foundation of justice is vital. We can't uphold it if we're overly concerned with trivial matters or if we're gullible and inconsistent. If you find yourself constantly chasing or avoiding things that stress you, remember it's often you going to them, not them coming to you. Stay calm and centered, and these things will lose their power over you. The soul is at its best when it's balanced not reaching out too far or closing in too much. It should be clear and bright, helping you see the truth in everything, both outside and inside. If someone looks down on me, that's their issue. I'll focus on ensuring I don't give them a reason to. If someone dislikes me, that's on them. My approach will always be kindness, understanding and offering guidance if they're mistaken, not to show off but out of genuine goodwill, just like Phocion, if he truly meant it. Live in a way that even the gods would see you neither upset nor complaining. Why not act true to yourself and accept what the universe brings your way, especially when it's for the greater good? People might act superior, but they often end up flattering and bending to each other's whims. When someone says, I'll be honest with you, it's unnecessary. Honesty should be a given, evident in one's actions and expressions. Just as love is visible in the eyes of lovers, a person's true nature should be obvious. Genuine honesty shouldn't need an announcement. It should be as noticeable as a strong scent. Beware of fake friendships. They're the worst. True kindness and integrity are evident in a person's gaze and are unmistakable. Living the best life is within our control especially if we don't get too caught up in things that don't truly matter. This becomes easier when we realize that things around us don't shape our opinions. We do. We can choose not to let negative thoughts stick, or if they sneak in, we can quickly let them go. This mindset is only needed for a limited time since life is short. So why see it as hard? If something feels natural, embrace it and it'll get easier. If it doesn't, Figure out what feels right for you and pursue it, even if it's not glamorous. Everyone should be allowed to chase what truly makes them happy. Reflect on where everything comes from, its components, how it'll evolve, and its future state, realizing that it won't experience harm. Remember our connection to humanity. We're made for each other. Think of it as team members supporting one another. Think about how people behave in everyday situations and the beliefs they stand by, sometimes with misplaced confidence. If people act correctly, great. If not, they're likely acting out of ignorance. Nobody wants to be seen as unkind or unfair. You're not perfect either. Even if you avoid certain mistakes, the potential to make them is still there. Don't be too quick to judge. It takes knowledge to understand others' actions fully. If you're feeling stressed, remember life is short. 
We're here for only a brief moment. It's not others' actions, but our reactions that upset us. If you don't see something as a personal slight, it won't bother you. Often, our reactions to problems are worse than the problems themselves. Genuine kindness is powerful. If someone tries to hurt you, respond with understanding. Show them a better way with compassion, not sarcasm. Remember, expecting people with bad intentions not to act on them is unrealistic. But you can't let them harm others and expect them to spare you. That's not how it works. Consider these tips as tools for life. Start being more understanding and patient. Avoid anger and excessive praise. Both can lead to issues. Remember, true strength comes from patience and understanding. The closer you are to staying calm, the stronger you are. Lastly, hoping that wrongdoers won't act wrongly is naive, but expecting them to harm others and leave you untouched is not just foolish, it's unfair. There are four mindsets you need to watch out for and address when they surface. Unnecessary thoughts, those that harm relationships, insincere words, and anything that makes you feel guilty, as it's a sign you're letting your desires control your better judgment. Think about the elements in your body, the parts that naturally rise, like fire, or fall, like earth. Stay balanced where they are because of the universe's laws. Yet, our mind, our thinking part, sometimes rebels and resists its natural state. Negative feelings like anger, sadness, or fear are signs you're going against your nature. Remember, your soul is designed for respect towards a higher power and for fairness towards others. Valuing fairness and righteousness is essential. If you're always changing your goals in life, you won't be consistent in who you are. But just having a single goal isn't enough. It needs to be the right one. While people might not agree on every good thing, they typically value what benefits everyone. So, make your goal community focused. Only by aligning your personal goals with the greater good can you maintain a consistent character throughout life. Think about the story of the city mouse and the country mouse. The city mouse was always anxious and scared. Socrates thought popular beliefs were just like the silly monsters used to scare kids. At events, the Spartans gave visitors shaded seats but took any available spot for themselves. Socrates didn't accept Perdicca's offer because he didn't want to owe a favor he couldn't repay. The Ephesians suggested often remembering past people who were virtuous. The Pythagoreans said to look at the sky every morning, to remember the consistent and pure nature of stars. Remember when Socrates wore just a skin because Xanthippe took his cloak. He told his embarrassed friends it was no big deal. In both reading and life, you have to learn before you can teach or lead. If you're not free, neither are your words. I couldn't help but smile inside. Some even criticize pure virtue. Hoping for figs in winter is like wishing for something that's gone, like longing for a child who's no longer with you. Epictetus once mentioned that when you hug your child, remind yourself, they might not be here tomorrow. It's not a curse, but a reality of life. Just like saying the corn has been harvested isn't bad luck. Green grapes, ripe ones, dried grapes. These are all transformations not into nothing, but into something different from the present. As Epictetus pointed out, nobody can take away your freedom to act. He also emphasized understanding the true nature of our decisions and controlling our urges so they're balanced, community-minded, and proportionate. We should avoid being swayed by our desires and not stress over things beyond our control. The real question, he said, isn't about the trivial things but about whether we're thinking clearly or not. What do you want? Socrates asked. Rational souls or irrational ones? Rational, of course. Do you want virtuous ones? Yes, virtuous. Then why not pursue them? We believe we already possess them. Then why the conflicts and disagreements? Book 12. Everything you're trying to achieve the hard way is already yours if you just embrace it. This means letting go of the past, 
trusting the future to fate and focusing on the now with integrity and fairness. Embrace the life you have because it's the one you're meant for. Be honest, do the right thing, and don't let others or their opinions hold you back. And don't let your body's limitations define you. It's your mind and spirit that matter. As life's end approaches, focus only on the spirit within you. Don't fear death, fear not truly living. Do this, and you'll truly belong to the world that created you. You'll understand life's events without constantly being surprised or overwhelmed by them. God sees our souls without the distractions of our physical bodies. He connects only with the divine part he instilled in us. If you can view life this way, many of life's troubles will seem trivial. If you focus less on the physical and more on the soul, you won't get caught up in material concerns like clothes, houses, or what people think about you. Focus on what's truly important. You're made up of three parts, body, soul, and intelligence. The first two need your attention, but the third is truly yours. If you clear your mind of what others say or do, what you've said or done, worries about the future and the distractions of your surroundings, you'll find clarity and freedom in your thoughts. By focusing solely on the present, you'll experience genuine peace and enjoy a fulfilling life until your last moments. Just as Empedocles described, a faultless sphere rejoiced in endless rest. It's interesting how people value themselves above all, but weigh others' opinions more than their own. Imagine if a wise figure told someone to voice every thought the moment it came to mind. Most wouldn't last a day. It shows we care more about what others think of us than our own self-assessment. How can we believe that the gods, who've always done right by us, would let good people, closely connected to divine matters, just disappear after death? If they should have lived on, the gods would have made it so. If it doesn't happen, it means it's meant to be that way. By questioning this, you're essentially asking for fairness from the gods. But if we're asking, it's because we believe they're just and good. So, trust they've got the bigger picture in mind. Try things even if they seem impossible. Just like the left hand, usually less used, is better at holding the reins because of practice, you might surprise yourself. Think about how you want to be, both in spirit and body, when death comes. Remember how brief life is compared to the endlessness of time and how uncertain everything material is. See things for what they truly are. Understand the nature of pain, pleasure, death, and fame. Realize that many troubles come from our own perceptions and external factors can't truly control us. When it comes to principles, be flexible and adaptable, like a boxer. A swordsman is helpless without his weapon, but a boxer always has his fists. Reflect on the essence of things, differentiating between the physical, the cause, and the intent. It's amazing that humans have the power to act in ways that align with God's approval and to accept whatever is destined for us. Don't blame the gods for natural events. They don't make mistakes, and people don't intentionally do wrong. So, no one's truly at fault. It's silly and out of touch to be shocked by everyday life events. Life is either driven by destiny, a higher order, a kind creator, or it's just random chaos. If it's destiny, why fight it? If there's a benevolent force, align yourself with it. If it's chaos, take comfort knowing you can still control your reactions. Even if life overwhelms you, it can't take away your core beliefs. Just as a lamp continues to shine until it goes out, let your values like truth, justice, and moderation shine brightly until your own end. When you think someone has done wrong, ask yourself, how can I be sure it's a wrongdoing? If they did mess up, they've already judged themselves. Wanting bad people not to act badly is like wishing for the impossible. If you really care, help them change. If something doesn't feel right, don't do it. If it's not true, don't say it. Always try to understand the root of your feelings about something. Break it down. What caused it, its significance, how it relates to other things, and its lifespan. Realize that within you, there's something greater than the immediate feelings of joy or pain. 
It's beyond what controls you like a puppet. Ask yourself, what am I feeling right now? Is it fear? Doubt? Desire? Firstly, don't do things without a purpose. Secondly, always aim for the greater good of all. Soon, you and everything you see will be gone, including everyone alive now. Everything evolves, decays, and makes way for new things. Remember, everything comes down to perspective, and that's within your control. Change your viewpoint, and you'll find peace and stillness, just like a calm bay. Every natural process has an end, and there's no harm when it concludes, just like life. Life's end is determined by nature, sometimes by aging, but always by the interconnectedness of the universe. Ending at the right time isn't bad, it's in harmony with the universe. Death isn't something to be feared, it's natural, inevitable, and even beneficial in the grand scheme of things. Going with life's flow is, in essence, walking alongside God. Keep these three ideas with you. First, in whatever you do, act thoughtfully and justly. Remember that things happen either by chance or design, and we shouldn't blame either. Second, understand the nature of things, where they come from, what they're made of, and where they'll end up. Third, if you could see the world from above, you'd realize that while there's diversity in human actions, the bigger picture remains the same and everything is fleeting. Is it worth being prideful about such temporary matters? Let go of biases and you'll find peace. What's stopping you from letting them go? If something upsets you, remember that everything occurs according to the universe's nature and mistakes are often on someone else's part. Remember, the same events have, are, and will continue to happen everywhere. Recognize our shared bond, not just by blood, but by thought and intelligence. Understand that this intelligence is divine, originating from God, and nothing truly belongs to us, not our family, our body, or even our life. Also, remember that perception shapes reality, and the only real moment we have is the present. Remember those who stress too much about things, or those who reached great heights or depths in fame or misfortune. Think of Fabius in his countryside, Lucius in his gardens, Stertinius vacationing at Baiae, Tiberius at Capreae, Valius Rufus, and others who were highly regarded. Ask yourself, where are they now? Probably just memories or forgotten stories. Look at all these sought-after achievements and realize how fleeting they are. A true philosopher should be kind, balanced, and respect the universe without faking humility. When people question, have you seen the gods? How do you know they exist? Answer this, even though I can't see them, I feel their presence, just as I can't see my soul, but know it's there. Their influence is continuous, confirming their existence, and that's why I honor them. True clarity in life comes from understanding the essence of everything and recognizing its structure. It's about being genuinely fair and honest. What's left is to enjoy life, making the most of every moment. Just as there's one sun that illuminates everything, there's a singular essence in everything, even if it appears in countless forms. There's a shared consciousness, even if it seems divided. Elements like breath and matter might not connect or feel, but they're bound by this shared consciousness. This intelligence naturally seeks and connects with its kind, maintaining unity. What do you truly want? To keep living? To feel or to have desires? To grow and then fade? To speak or think? Which of these really matters? If they all seem trivial, focus on what's lasting, following logic and the universe's design. Being upset about losing these trivial things goes against both logic and the universe's intent. Think about it. Our time on this vast ancient earth is just a blip, soon to be lost in the vastness of time. We're tiny parts of the universe's matter and spirit. We're just tiny specks on this vast planet. Knowing this, only two things should matter. Living true to ourselves and accepting what the universe has in store. What truly matters is your mindset and perspective. Everything else, whether within our control or not, 
is just temporary and fleeting. This should motivate you to not fear death. Even those who valued pleasure and feared pain weren't afraid of it. If you believe that everything happens for a reason and don't fuss about how often you've been right or wrong, then the length of your life doesn't matter. So, why fear death? Think of life as being part of a grand city. Does it matter if you lived there for three or five years? Everything that happens is part of the city's laws. So, if nature, not some cruel ruler, decides it's your time to leave, why resist? Imagine life as a play. If you're taken off the stage after three acts instead of five, it's okay. The universe decided the play's length, and it's not up to you. So, bow out gracefully, knowing that the universe has its reasons.